The Grape Nuts and Grape Nuts Flakes program, starring Jack Denny, with Barry Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, Rochester, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, since this is the start of a new year, we bring you a man who, at the age of 20, began his phenomenal career in show business. That's right. At 30, he was a credit to his profession. Yes, sir. At 40, he was admired and respected by millions. That's me. At 50, his name became a household word. 50? <laughs> At 60, he became... All right, stop! That's enough already. For heaven's sake. And here he is, Jack Benny. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking. And Don, it's a good thing I stopped you or I'd have died of old age before the show started. <laughs> Forty, fifty, sixty. I wasn't so very long ago that I was going to Waukegan Grammar School. Well, I know, Jack, but you were the only kid in class the teacher called Mr. <laughs> Don, they didn't call me that till I was in the sixth grade. And anyway, Don, it doesn't... Hello, Jack. Hello, Mary. Anyway, Don, it doesn't... Fine thing. I hurry over here and nobody even notices my new dress. Oh. Oh. Oh, say, that dress is beautiful, Mary. But don't you feel a little silly wearing a man's necktie with it? Oh, that. <laughs> well, Dennis gave it to me for Christmas, and I'm wearing it so I won't hurt his feelings. You mean Dennis gave you a... Oh, wait a minute. He must have gotten the boxes mixed up. Well, what do you mean? Well, Dennis gave me the cutest pair of lace panties... All covered with rosebuds. <laughs> oh, gee, I'd love to have those. Jack, I'll give you the next time. You give me the lace panties. Well... Well, Dennis really meant them for me. I know, but... You didn't lose them, did you? I hope not. <laughs> gee. Oh, so that's it. You didn't want to hurt his feelings either. Look, Mary, when someone when someone gives you a gift... I know, I know. But, Jack, those panties were supposed to fit me. How in the world did you get them on? Oh, I didn't have much trouble. You didn't, eh? I'll bet those rosebuds are stretched to full bloom. <laughs> Never mind. Let's see, where was I? Oh, yes. Now, look, Don, the next time you make a remark about my age, you better... Hello, first... Mr. Benny. Oh, hello, Dennis. Don, the next time you make a remark about my age... What's the matter? Oh, Don's always telling people that I'm a lot older than I am, and I'm sick of it. Why don't you hit him with your cane? <laughs> Dennis, they gave me this cane with my sports suit instead of an extra pair of candies. I mean, pants. <laughs> anyway, to change the subject, I'm glad you're all here early tonight because we have a very important program to do. What do you mean, Jackson? You'll know in a minute, Bill. Uh, ladies and gentlemen... As is our custom at this time of year, and even though it is January 2nd, tonight we are going to present our annual New Year's play entitled The New Tenant, or Goodbye 43, Hello 44. I hope you will all enjoy our latest version. Now, once again, I will play the part of the Hey, old... Mr. Benny, every year you do one of these plays, and I don't understand them. Well, you see, Dennis, uh, these little sketches we do at the close of each year are not so much plays as they are allegorical fantasies. Now, do you understand? No. <laughs> well, Dennis, an allegorical fantasy is like, uh... Like a... Well, look, kid. Did you see Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> well? I didn't understand that either. <laughs> Dennis, it's all very simple. Look, my play and Snow White are in the same category in that they both deal with the abstract and the esoteric rather than with the prosaic. Prosaic? Yes, that's it. What is? Hmm. <laughs> Don't worry, Dennis. Jack doesn't understand it either. I understand every word I said. Sure you do, Jackson. How do you know, Phil? Because I'm the guy what learned it to him. <laughs> Phil, if you really want to help me keep quiet, keep quiet. <laughs> Now, look, look, Dennis, Dennis, an allegorical fantasy oh, is Oh, a... Jack, what do you want to show off with big words for? Show off? If you want to explain something, uh, do it simply and direct. Well, look, Dennis, I'll explain it to you later. Meanwhile, in our fantasy, you're going to play a double role. The parts of the two most despicable men in the world. 
Hitler and Tojo. I'm going to play the parts of Hitler and Tojo? Yes. Where's Amira? Why? I'm going to spit right in my faces. <laughs> you don't have to, kid. You're only playing the parts. Anyway, you're going to be Hitler and uh, Tojo tonight. Well, okay, but I'll just hate myself in the morning. <laughs> now, Phil, you're going to be Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam? Yes. You see, in our sketch, I will play the part of the old year, 1943, who has been living in a big rooming house called the United States, run by Uncle Sam and his wife, Columbia. Now, Mary, you're going to be Columbia. You have 48 children, one for each state in the Union. I've got 48 children? Holy smoke. Well, Mary, it's only an allegorical fantasy. Well, this is a fine time to tell me. <laughs> Mary, I tried to explain it to you. Your children are the 48 states. Each state is a child. Oh, well, then I better hurry and change California. It's wet again. <laughs> well, don't worry about it now. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, we set the stage for our play, which will go on immediately after a song. I'll get it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. This is Rochester. What do you want, Rochester? I've been down to the stores exchanging your Christmas presents for you. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, you didn't have any trouble, did you? Only at one place. They refused to give you a refund on your Christmas tree. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, it was worth a try anyway. And say, boss, while I was out for you, I tried to exchange the present my uncle gave me. Uh-huh. But the store wouldn't do it just because I tried it out for size. That was mean of them. What was the gift? A bottle of gin. <laughs> well, no wonder they wouldn't exchange it. And Rochester, why don't you try to reform? Oh, I did, boss. Remember yesterday I made a New Year's resolution not to shoot craps anymore? Yes, I remember that resolution. What happened to it? <laughs> Rochester, have you been shooting dice again? It wasn't my fault, boss. Some of my friends came to visit me. Yes? It was the first time a group ever came through a door on their knees. <laughs> so, uh, so you got right in the game, huh? No, I didn't, boss. I tossed a coin. Heads, I shoot traps with them, and tails, I don't. Uh-huh. And I suppose it landed head. No, boss, it landed tails. Well? As I bent down to pick up the coin, two small cubes fell out of my suit. Uh-huh. And to my amazement, Hart Chapman and Marsh had thrown a seven. <laughs> Well, I'll talk to you about that later. Where are you now, Rochester? In a phone booth on Central Avenue, and I... Get off my lap, honey. This is a high phone. <laughs> Rochester, have you got a girl in the telephone booth with you? It ain't an allegorical fantasy. <laughs> Rochester, I'm surprised. So am I, boss. She ain't the same one I came in here with. <laughs> Well, Rochester, I haven't got time to talk to you anymore now, so I'll see you when I get home. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, say, boss. Now what? There was a phone call from the freight company telling me to come over because your camel had arrived from Egypt. My camel? That's wonderful. Well, listen, Rochester, don't tell anybody, and I'll spring it on my friends as a surprise. Well, you better wait till the wind is with you, or the element of surprise will be lost. <laughs> well, don't worry. I'll take care of it. See you later. Goodbye. Goodbye. I'm glad the camel finally got her. I've been waiting long enough. Sing, Dennis. <laughs> that was my shining hour sung by Dennis Day. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our annual New Year's play entitled The New Tenant, or Goodbye 43, Hello 44. As the curtain rises, it's almost midnight of December 31st. An old man, 1943, is packing his bags and ready to make his exit. Curtain. Music. Oh, Columbia. Columbia. Will you come here a minute, please? What do you want, 43? Give me a hand with this packing, will you? I've got to get out of here before midnight and make room for the new tenant. Oh, yes. Little 44 will be here any minute. Say, where's your husband, Uncle Sam? I'd like to say goodbye to him. Oh, he's around someplace. Sam's been pretty busy lately. You said it. All your kids have been pitching in, too. Here comes one of my relatives, the Navy. Oh, yes. Hello, Navy. Hello, old-timer. Hi, Columbia. 
Boy, has he grown. Yep, his tonnage is almost doubled. <laughs> He's big, all right. Nice to see him so healthy. By the way, Navy, how's your wife? Oh, fine, fine. And congratulations are in order. Really? Yep, triplets. Three new battleships. Well, congratulations, Pappy. Here's a picture of them. Well, I'll be doggone. They got their mother's nose and their father's keel. <laughs> Yes, sir. Well, so long. See you later, Columbia. Hey, he needs a big family. He's got two bathtubs to fill. Guess I might as well finish packing. Columbia, hand me that bundle of swing music. I'll take that with me. Here you are. Thanks. Lay that pistol down, babe. Lay that pistol down. Boy, am I sick of that. (laughs) Say, Columbia, I got a few minutes yet, so I thought... Well, hello, Eleanor. Glad, glad to see you back. Mm, there she goes again. <laughs> hey, Columbia, I started to tell you I've only got a few minutes, and I thought that maybe before we... Oh, hello, Sam. Well, Uncle Sam, where you been? Oh, what a week, what a week. I've really been busy, been sending Christmas presents to my nephews all over the world. Well, you're working hard, Sam, but you never look better in your life. And say, what's that button you're wearing on your lapel? I never knew you took sides in politics. Well, I don't. I don't care if it's the Democrats or the Republicans. They're both good. But that button... Well, come closer and take a look at it. Okay. Well, I'll Well, be... what does it say, old-timer? Frank Sinatra. (laughs) Well, Sam, it's good to know that with all that's on your mind, you still find time for a little entertainment. That's right, and that ain't all. Look down here. Bobby socks. (laughs) (laughs) Sam, you'll never grow old. Hey, Columbia, turn on the radio. I want to hear the World Series. This will be my last chance to hear the big game. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, you are now listening to the final game of the World Series between the United Nations All-Stars and the Axis Polecats. That's it. That's what I want. Me too. A lot of my boys is playing in that game. (laughs) For the benefit of you people who tuned in late, this is the last half of the eighth. The Axis had their inning and the United Nations are now coming up to bat. In the early stages of the game, the Axis did pretty well. They pulled a couple of sneak plays and tried to steal a few bases... But they were stopped by a squeeze play between Timoshenko and Montgomery. Those boys are sure a couple of big leaguers, all right. You said it, old-timer. And now, folks, before we resume our play-by-play description, I would like to remind you that this broadcast comes to you through the courtesy of Freedom Unlimited. That's a great product. All right, folks, the United Nations are now at bat. The coaches are George Marshall at third, Hap Arnold at first, and stepping up to the plate is Douglas MacArthur. Hear that, Sam? He's one of the heaviest hitters we got. Yep, he's got a darn good batting average, too. As you know, ladies and gentlemen, the battery for the Axis is Tojo pitching and Hitler catching. No oh boy, is he catching. <laughs> You're not kidding. And here comes the first pitch. It's a hit! Right between shortstop and flirt. And MacArthur is safe on first base. Well, Columbia, we got a man on first. Yes, sirree. Incidentally, folks, in the sixth inning, Mussolini got hit on the head with the ball. So now the Axis will have to get another water boy. Well, he never was much anyway. All right, folks, MacArthur is on first base, and coming up to bat is Chun Kai Shek. <laughs> Here comes the first pitch. Ball one. It's low. Doggone everything he does is low. Yep, he's been throwing some nasty curves, but our boys are getting wise to him. Chung kai is standing, grimly determined at the plate. Here comes the second ball. He lays a beautiful bunt down the third baseline, which advances MacArthur to second base. Boys are cheering Chung kai wonderful sacrifice. I knew Chun Kai shek could sacrifice. That's the kind of a fella he is. Yep, that's what I call great teamwork. While we're waiting for the next batter to come up, let's have a word from our sponsor, Freedom Unlimited. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Do you spend restless nights because of a haunting fear that you may lose your rights? Your right to free speech? Your right to worship as you please? And your right to live without fear of aggression? If you do, ladies and gentlemen, get yourself some shares of Freedom Unlimited. And you can do that by buying war bonds. Remember, folks, Freedom, spelled F-R-E-E-D-O-M. That fella sure knows what he's talking about. And now back to the game between the United Nations All-Stars and the Axis Polecats. Well, folks, the crowd is sure excited. MacArthur's on second base, and coming up to bat is Montgomery. Well, him for his wonderful work in the field. Sure is a fine player. That's right, Sam. The pitcher's winding up, and here comes the ball. Montgomery takes a hard run to Rommel. Rommel's going back. He's going back. He tries to stop it, but he fumbles. Rommel fumbles the ball. Hear that, Columbia? Montgomery pulls up at first base, and MacArthur goes to third. The crowd is going wild. By golly, I don't blame him. Hey, Sam, that Rommel ain't doing so good, is he? No, he ain't. He's the best player they got. That's right. And now, folks, uh uh-oh, what's this? Hitler walks out to the pitcher's mound to talk to Tojo. It seems they got their signals crossed, and Hitler's worried. Was ist los, Schweinhund? Und die Knoten verstaut sich gleich, nur versehen, die keine Belüftung verstanden, die Knoten gehen ab. Oh, so sorry, please, so sorry, please. So sorry, please, so sorry. Verstreiten sich Roten, verstehe nicht. Eine Minute verstunden, die Roten, verstehe nicht. Ach, Schade! <lacht> this game, so play ball. That's telling them, old-timer. Well, folks, the game's about to continue, but there's a switch in the battery for the axis. Hitler is now going to pitch. A lot of good that'll do. Hitler used to have a pretty good arm. He ought to. He exercised enough hanging wallpaper. <laughs> yes, ladies and gentlemen, Hitler is in the pitcher's box, and coming up to bat for the United Nations is Tim Oshenko. <laughs> Timoshenko. <laughs> He'll knock Hitler out of the box and then put him in one. <laughs> Wait and see. And here comes the first pitch. Ball one. Very wide. See that, Sam? Hitler's nervous. He's winding up again, and here comes the second pitch. Ball two. You no, know, some old timer, I think Hitler's afraid to pitch to him. Here comes the third pitch. Ball three. You're right, Sam. Yep, Hitler doesn't dare take a chance with Timoshenko. There it is. Ball four. Timoshenko walks to first, putting three men on base. Timoshenko on first, Montgomery on second, and MacArthur on third. The crowd is yelling for a home run. <laughs> One good hit now put the game in the bag. What a ball game. What excitement. Bases are loaded for the United Nations, and the Axis team is plenty worried. This is the tensest moment of the game, and the question is... oh There's a conference being held at the United Nations dugout. Co-managers Roosevelt, Churchill, and Stalin are putting their heads together to decide on the final move, and... and... Wait a minute, folks. Wait a minute. They've reached a decision. They're sending Eisenhower to back! Eisenhower! Yippee! Yes, sir, that's one of my boys. One of our boys, Sam. Oh, boy, I can hardly wait to see what's going to happen. I'm afraid you won't be able to 1943. Your time is almost up, and you better finish packing. Well, I want to hear the end of the game. Well, I know how you feel, old-timer, but you just haven't got the time. Okay, okay, turn off the radio. Anyway, I got a pretty good idea how it's going to turn out. Doggone, look at that clock. Just got my duds together in time. Hmm, that's the first stroke of 12. I wonder what's keeping the new tenant. Little fella should be here by now. Well, don't worry. He'll show up. He always has. Say, here's a tip for you, Sam. You worked hard during the time I was here. You did a good job. And I want you to work even harder for the little fella that's coming in. Don't you worry, old-timer. I'm really rolling now. Hmm. Time's a-fleeting, but I can't leave till that little shaver gets here. That must be him now. Yep. Come in. Well, it's the little new year. Hello, Sonny. Hello, old timer. <laughs> What's that you got under your arm? Some forms I'm going to try awfully hard to get signed this year. Yeah? What are they? Well, here's the most important one. It says, un, un. How do you pronounce these big words? Let's see that. 
Oh, that says unconditional surrender. Well, I hope you get them signed darn soon. Hey, kid, I want you to meet Uncle Sam and his wife, Columbia. Glad to know you folks. Hello, Sonny. Hiya, bub. You ought to have a coat on with them diapers. It's pretty chilly tonight. (laughs) (laughs) I was sure cold the first night I got here. (laughs) Well, son, I'm glad you're a sturdy little fella because there's a big ball game going on, and after it's over, you're going to have plenty to do. With all the pop bottles and peanut shells laying around, you're going to have to clean up the field and put it in order again. I'll do the best I can, sir. I know you will. But tell me, old-timer, how's the game going? Well, at the start, things didn't look so good. But after a while... Hear that, son? Yes, sir. What is it? That's being played for some of Sam's nephews. They were darn good ball players and hard hitters, too, but they were put out early in the game. Wasn't their fault. Pitching was a little too fast for them then, and it wasn't fair, either. The man that had my job last year told me that Tojo started pitching before the umpire said, play ball. That ain't baseball, son. Not like they play it in America. Well, I gotta be moseying along now. Oh, by the way, son, Uncle Sam's got a nephew called Franklin that's been taking mighty good care of him. Ain't he, Sam? They're darn too. So keep an eye on him, son, and give him all the help you can. Franklin, eh? I'll write that down. And here's some more names for you. There's Winston, Joe, Chung. A whole lot more than Sam will give you. I ain't got time to mention them all right now. I'll make a note of them. Leave it to me. Hmm. One more thing, son. When I came in, there was a name given to me, and I was instructed to pass it on to you. And I want you to pass it on to the next little fellow that takes over. Who is it, sir? The name is Colin Kelly. He represents all our boys who only got one turn at bat. Remember that, son. I will. Well, got to be leaving now. Goodbye, Sam. So long, old timer. Well, here I go. So long, 43. So long, Columbia. Keep them flying. The Grape Nuts and Grape Nuts Flakes program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, Rochester, and yours truly, Don Wilson. For now, ladies and gentlemen... Let's turn back the clock a few hours. It's Sunday morning in the Jack Benny household. A Sunday, a Monday, and always. I would be in heaven if I could roll a seven. Sunday, Monday, and always. I'd be so happy it would make my poor heart pound. To hear those little cubes go round and round and round. Oh, Rochester. Rochester, whoever told you you could sing? There was only one man who told me I couldn't. Well, I'd like to meet him. He's dead now. (laughs) Well, prop up another pillow behind me so I'll be more comfortable. Uh, You can bring me my breakfast now. Okay, but this is the silliest thing I ever heard of. There's nothing silly about it. Lots of people have breakfast in bed. I know, boss, but not in the kitchen. <laughs> well, it's warmer down here than it is up in my room. I hope you haven't any objection. No, but it sure was a strain on me carrying your bed downstairs. <laughs> it was a strain on me, too. You almost shook me out of it. <laughs> Now, how about some, uh, some orange juice? I'm fixing it for you right now. Let's see. Here's the orange. Now, where's the knife? I got it. Now to give it a good squeeze. What? What? What was that? Juice! <laughs> juice? Yes, sir. These California oranges don't know their own strength. <laughs> That looks good. Uh, what else? What else should I have, Rochester? How about some breakfast cereal? Yeah. What kind of breakfast cereal have we got? 
Oh, boss, come now. <laughs> oh, yes, I'll have the flakies this time. <laughs> the flakies? Uh, and uh, would you like some? Uh-oh. Say, boss, here comes your crazy boarder, Mr. Billingsley. Shh, quiet, Rochester. You'll hurt his feelings. Good morning, Mr. Billingsley. Good morning, Mr. Benny. Taking it lying down, I see. <laughs> yes, yes, breakfast in bed is one luxury I always enjoy. You know, I always used to have my bed in the kitchen, too. In fact, I lived in the kitchen. You did? Why? Oh, it was one of those things. I was married to a cockroach. <laughs> to... To a cockroach? Her name was Gwendolyn. We used to argue all the time over who was boss. What was that, Mr. Billingsley? I say we used to argue all the time over who was boss. You and the cockroach? You did? Yes. So one day I put my foot down and that was the end of it. <laughs> hmm. After that, I, I stayed single for a long time. But I got tired of being a bachelor, so I remarried. What's that, Rochester? Our trap! It finally caught that mouse! Oh. Well, what do you know? I'm single again. <laughs> One tragedy after another. Would you, uh, would you care for a cup of coffee, Mr. Billingsley? No, thanks. I must be leaving now. I'm going to run over to the barber shop and get a T-bone steak. But you can't get a T-bone steak at the barber shop. I know, but I can't get one at the butcher's either, so I might as well get a haircut while I'm waiting. <laughs> I see. Well, goodbye, Mr. Benny. Goodbye. How did that get by the censor? <laughs> That's what you... You know, Rochester, I... I feel like laughing, but he scares me so. I mean, uh, Rochester, I think you're right. He has been acting a little eccentric lately. Well, hand me my robe. I'm going to get up. Okay. Say, boss, you better hurry. we got to pick up your camel at the freight company today. That's right, Rochester. I invited my whole gang over. And remember, don't breathe a word about it. I want the camel to be a big surprise. I'll get it, Rochester. You clean up the dishes. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Well, you told me to come over here. Now, what's the big secret you're going to spring on it? Mary, you'll never guess. It'll be the biggest surprise this town ever had. Don't tell me you were drafted. <laughs> Don't be silly, Mary. I'm over 38. <laughs> what are you laughing at? That's what kept you out of the last war. <laughs> Mary, I'm only a little over 38 now. Go on, you've got a brother that's 50. I know I have. Your twin brother. So what? We had a slow doctor. <laughs> Anyway, the idea of my being in the service isn't so ridiculous. Well, you know what Fred Allen said. The biggest laugh he ever got was when you appeared before your draft board. Oh, yeah? Well, all I know is when Allen went to his draft board, they looked at the guy in front of him and said 4-H, the guy in back of him and said 4-F, then they looked at Allen and said, what for? <laughs> Which, incidentally, is the same thing his father said to the store. So don't tell me about Alan. All right, Jack. Why, that weakling. He, he had to take a local anesthetic to get his elk's tooth clean. <laughs> so don't tell me about Alan. All right, Jack, I won't. He had to go to Charles Atlas for six months to get enough muscles to hiccup. <laughs> so don't tell me about Alan. All right, Jack, all right. And you're lucky I can't think of anything else. Jack, will you please forget about Alan and tell me what the surprise is? Mary, I'm not going to tell you. You'll have to wait here till it comes. Meanwhile, I'm going upstairs and get dressed. Okay, I want to use the phone anyway. I forgot to tell Butterfly what to prepare for dinner. Go ahead. I'll be down in a minute. This is the operator. Number, please. Uh, give me Crestview 52717. Just a minute. Does Mr. Benny know you're using his phone? <laughs> Well, of course he knows. Oh, yeah? Well, what's the password? <laughs> password? Well, of all the... Oh, Jack, what's the password? Sulfanilamide. <laughs> hmm, you have to get a prescription to make a phone call here yet. 
Operator, it's sulfonilamide. <laughs> okay, I'll get your number. Hello? Hello, Butterfly. This is Miss Livingston. Oh, hello, Miss Livingston. Gee, I'm awfully glad you called. You are, Butterfly? Why? I was lonesome. <laughs> Oh, well, Butterfly, the reason I called is I forgot to tell you what to prepare for dinner tonight. Mm-hmm. I'll have dinner at 7 o'clock, so let's have vegetable soup, salad with Thousand Island dressing, lamb chops, and rice pudding. Have you got that down? I haven't even cooked it yet. <laughs> Butterfly, I mean, did you write it down? No, ma'am, but I will. Would you mind telling me again, Miss Livingston? All right. Vegetable soup, salad with Thousand Island dressing, lamb chops, and rice pudding. Now, have you got that written? Not yet, Miss Livingston. I'm having trouble with the spelling. <laughs> oh, uh, what can't you spell? The words. <laughs> well, never mind, Butterfly. I'll come home early and help you out. Thank you. By the way, Miss Livingston, when you get home, would you mind coming in the back door? Why? I just swept the living room. <laughs> well, I'll try and be careful. Goodbye. Goodbye. Say, Mary. Mary, I'm going to rush out now and bring back the surprise. So you call down Phil and Dennis and tell them to hurry over. All right. Rochester, get the car out. Okay, boss. Oh, Jack, are you still driving around in that yellow cab of yours? Mary, it doesn't look like a cab anymore. I had it painted a different color. <laughs> oh. That's right, Miss Limston. If we didn't stop to pick up passengers, no one would know it's a taxi cab. <laughs> Rochester, stop lying and let's go. Oh, darn it, there's the phone. I'll get it. Hello? Mr. Billy, this is the operator. Yes? What's the password for tomorrow? L-S-M-F-T. <laughs> Goodbye. Come on, Rochester, let's go. You better hurry, Rochester. I want to get to the freight, off freight office before it closes. Okay. And when we get the camel, I want you to be nice to her. Boss, I don't want to have anything to do with those wild animals. I'm having enough trouble with your polar bear. Oh, you're always afraid of Carmichael just because he shows his teeth once in a while. For heaven's sake, he's only smiling at you. Smiling at me? Yes. You want to know something, boss? What? Yesterday when I was feeding him, I happened to turn my back and he smiled right through the seat of my pants. <laughs> Oh, Rochester, stop exaggerating. Carmichael's just playful. Playful? What happened to the gas man? <laughs> what are you talking about? It was two years ago. Well, we haven't had a gas bill since. <laughs> All right, Rochester, drop it. Anyway, here we are at the freight office. Oh, boy. Won't the gang be surprised when I come home with the camel? I guess we'll have to go over to that other window. Where? Over there, where the man's on the phone. I'm sorry, but we don't make deliveries. You'll have to call for it yourself. I'll oh, be mister. With you. I'll be with you in a minute, sir. No, no, I can't break the rule. You'll have to call for it yourself. Goodbye. <laughs> Can you imagine a guy like that? Sending a mountain goat all the way from Denver. Uh, a mountain goat, huh? Yeah. <laughs> what a crackpot he must be. Well. But there's nothing. You know what I got waiting here for some nitwit? What? It's... <laughs> it's... <laughs> well, well, what? what is it? If I told you, you wouldn't believe it. Oh, yes, he would. <laughs> Rochester. Well, what's waiting here for you, bud? Well. <laughs> well, what is it? <laughs> well... Oh! Well, what about it? They have them for pets in North Africa. <laughs> now, you have got my camel here, haven't you? You don't think I got these windows open because I love the great outdoors, do you? <laughs> Never mind that. Bring her out. You'll have to go get her yourself, mister. Every time I go near that crazy animal, she spits at me. <laughs> Your old fault. Camels only spit at people they don't like. Come on, Rochester. We'll go get her. Oh, there she is, Rochester. There's a camel. <laughs> Isn't she cute? <laughs> oh, you sweet thing. We're going to be pals, aren't we? <laughs> We're going to... Hmm. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> boss! Boss! There was nothing, Rochester. She just threw me a kiss. Well, I got some of it on me. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Now, help me put this rope around her neck. Okay. <laughs> Gee, Rochester, I can hardly wait to get her home. Boy, will the gang be surprised. <laughs> Gosh, I wonder what's keeping Jack so long. I'm getting kind of anxious to know what the surprise is. Me too. What do you think it is, Phil? I don't know. Maybe he broke down and finally decided to give us Christmas presents. Oh, I don't think so. I told Jack it's better to give than to receive, but he didn't hear the first part of it. No, I guess it isn't that. Oh, I know what. What? Maybe he broke down and finally decided to give us Christmas presents, huh? Dennis, I just said that. You did? Yeah. Copycat. Oh. Hey, Dennis. While we're waiting, how about giving us a little entertainment? Okay, take a card. I don't mean card tricks. Oh, this isn't a trick. This card I want you to take is from my singing teacher. He's looking for more business. Oh, well, we'll talk about that later. Yeah, let's have that song, kid. All right, easy. Easy now, girly. Easy. Here, here's the car, Rochester. Rochester, open the door. That camel ain't gonna fit in the car. Certainly it will. She can pull in her neck and fold up her leg. <laughs> oh, darn it. She won't get in. She keeps shying away. You should have taken the meter out, boy. She knows it's a taxi cab. <laughs> Don't be silly, Rochester. Well, put the flag up anyway. Now, let's see. I'll tell you what we'd better do. You drive the car home and I'll ride the camel. Now, give me a boost, will Okay. <laughs> Steady, steady. <laughs> steady there. there. <laughs> steady, girly. Gee, gee, this feels high. Hey, look at the guy on the camel. Holy smoke. Well, that's the funniest thing I've ever seen. Hey, mister. What? The camels are coming. Ta da, ta da. The camels are coming. Oh, shut up. What's the matter with you people? Did you ever see a camel before? Hey, Sonny, stop that. Cut it out. Cut that out, I say. You quit hollering at my boy, mister. Well, make him stop riding his bicycle under us. <laughs> What a bunch of tourists. <laughs> Rochester, start the car and let's get going. Rochester. I beg your pardon, sir. You know me and don't deny it. <laughs> <laughs> now let's get started. My goodness, look, look, in the middle of the street, a lovely giraffe. <laughs> Madam, this happens to be a camel. I'm not talking to you. <laughs> Rochester, let's get away from this crowd. Come on, girly. Get in. Come on. Come on. Steady. Steady. Careful, boss. She ran up. Take it easy, girly. Take it easy. Oh, 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 boss. Hold on. Look out. Look out. I can. I can. Oh. What happened, boss? What happened? I fell off. That's what happened. <laughs> Rochester. Rochester, the camel's running away. Grab the rope. I did, but it broke. Oh, doggone it. There she goes down the street. Don't worry, boss. There's a red light. She'll have to stop. <laughs> Don't be silly. Well, I better call up the house and tell the gang not to wait. Darn it, and I wanted to surprise them with the camel. Oh, well. Rochester, you try to catch her. I'm going over to that drugstore and phone. Hey, Mary, I can't hang around here any longer. I got to get home before the broadcast and bring Alice my radio script. Oh, does she rehearse it with you? No, she explains it to me. <laughs> well, I can do that, Phil. Hey, that must be Jack with his surprise. Yeah, maybe that's why he's ringing the bell. I'll open the door. Oh, hello. Hello, is Jack Benny here? Well, uh, no. Well, gee, I can't understand it. I'm his girlfriend, Gladys Abisca, when he wanted me to come over to the house for a surprise. Oh, do you hear that, fellas? So you're the surprise. Gee, am I? Say, Mary, maybe they're engaged. Come on in, Gladys. Uh, thank you. Well, 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 so you're the surprise. Oh, Miss Abisco? Yeah. <laughs> Dennis. I'm only trying to be a wolf. <laughs> hey, Mary, it looks like the Jack and his girlfriend got their signals crossed, huh? Yeah, I wonder where... Oh, excuse me, Gladys. I'll be right back. 
Hello? Hello, Mary. This is Jack. I've got some bad news about my surprise. I know. I've seen her. <laughs> what? Your surprise is here. At my house? You mean she found her way all by herself? <laughs> well, what's so wonderful about that? Well, I knew she had a tag around her neck, but I didn't know she could read. <laughs> Jack, stop being so funny, and I think it was rude of you not to come with her. Mary, I was bringing her home, but the rope broke, and she got away. <laughs> the rope broke? Yes, the last time I saw her, she was running down the street waving her tail at people. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, Mary, look, she must be thirsty by now. Would you mind giving her a drink of water? Of course not. Now, look, you'll find a pail on the back door. <laughs> Just fill it up with water and set it on the floor in front of her. On the floor? Yes. She'll get down on her knees and drink it. Jack, you know what you're talking about. Of course. She was trained that way. And Mary, look, she has a special diet, so don't give her anything to eat till I get home. I don't want anything to happen because I got a good offer for her from the zoo. Jack, I think you're nuts. Oh, yeah, I know she looks kind of dirty now, but when I get home, I'm going to give her a bath. <laughs> Jack, if she heard you say that, she'd slap your face. Slap my face? Mary, what are you talking about? Your girlfriend, Gladys Abisco, she's here. Well, what of us? Isn't she your surprise? Of course not. The surprise is my camel. Your camel? Yes, you remember. It's the one that I said I was going to... Boss! Boss! But, Jack, I I have to hang up the phone now, Mary. Rochester's calling me. What is it, Rochester? I found a camel. Good. Where'd you find her? In the next booth. (laughs) Well, get her out of there. We gotta wait, boss. She's put in the call to Egypt. There'll be a three-hour delay on the call. (laughs) Rochester, stop making up such silly things. Okay. Now, tell me, where is she? She's over at the counter having a cherry Coke. Well, that's different. (laughs) Let's go get her and go home. Well, folks, we'll be with you next Sunday night at the same time, broadcasting from the Marine Air Station at El Toro, California. Good night, everybody. The Grape Nuts and Grape Nuts Flakes program, coming to you from the Marine Corps Air Station at El Toro, California, and starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day Rochester, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the Air Station at El Toro, California, home of the rough tough fighting marines, we bring you a civilian, Jack Benny. Thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, where do you get that stuff introducing me as a civilian? Can't you recognize a marine when you see one? But Jack... Look, Don, how many hairs have I got on my head? Three. There, there you are. I'm a sergeant. <laughs> Count them. But, Jack, if you're a Marine, how come you're not wearing a uniform? Because this is Sunday and it's my day off. <laughs> That's how come. Now, wait a minute, Jack. What are you talking about? There are thousands of Marines stationed here. Why haven't they got a day off? Don, they were offered a day off, but they saw the town of El Toro and voted against it. <laughs> Anyway, Don, the whole thing started with your... Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. How are you? Well, well, listen to that. Say, Mary, Jack and I have been talking about the camp here. How do you like being at a Marine station? Oh, it's all right, but it's the last time I'll ever go up in an airplane with one of these aviators. Now, Mary, that isn't a nice thing to say. Oh, no? As soon as we got behind a cloud, he tried to kiss me. (laughs) Well, what do you know? A flying wolf. (laughs) He he tried to kiss you, huh? Yeah, but I wouldn't let him, so he threw off the parachute. Well, what's wrong with that? I was wearing it. (laughs) Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Gee, Mary, you mean to say that you really made a parachute jump? Yes, and was I embarrassed? I pulled the wrong string. (laughs) 
Oh, my goodness. Well, anyway, Mary, you've got to admit that these Marine Flyers certainly are romantic. I'll say. Even the automatic pilot tried to put his arms around me. <laughs> now, Mary, huh? The minute I got in the plane, the needles on the instrument board spelled out, You'll be sorry! <laughs> Now, Mary, <laughs> Mary, listen, I happen to know that you went up with an ace, Colonel John Smith, and you said, there you are, and you said you never felt so safe in all your life. Sure, but he couldn't get the plane up any higher than 73 feet. He, he couldn't? No, next time he's going to leave his medals off. <laughs> You know, they do have a lot of they do have a lot of medals around here, don't they? One fellow followed me over here. I thought it was a good humor wagon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I really did. Huh? Say, Mary, Mary, that plane you went up in, was it a Corsair? A Corsair? Yes, one of those planes with wings that fold up. Oh, are the uh are the wings supposed to fold up like that? Sure. Gee, and I thought they were saluting Colonel Fox. <laughs> Don, did you meet Colonel Fox? What a great guy he is. Look, you know, the minute I arrived here this morning, he ran over, grabbed me by the shoulders... And said, straighten up. <laughs> he did not. He said that when he put his knee in my back. <laughs> anyway, he's one of the nicest. Well, look who's here. Say, fellas... I know that Alice Faye is one of your favorite pinup girls. We can't bring you the pin, but here's the guy she's stuck with, <laughs> Phil Harris. Thank you. Thanks, fellas. Thanks very much. Say, Phil. Phil, they like you here, don't they? I'll say they do, and you want to know something? They're nuts about Alice, too. I know. Huh? You know what they gave me when I came in here this morning? A marine flag to take home. Well, and look what it says on it. What? Something for Alice. That's Semper Fidelis. <laughs> Something for Alice. Semper Fidelis, Phil. <laughs> oh, brother, Phil. Semper Fidelis is Latin. Oh, that new language, huh? Yeah. They started it last week in El Toro. A new language. Hey, Jackson, I've heard a lot about that town, that El Toro. You know, I think I'll go out and see that town. Okay. So long. So long. Say, Mary. Well, I saw it. <laughs> So, so quick? It's a pretty small place, isn't it, Phil? Yeah, I'd have been back sooner, but the wind was against me. <laughs> oh. No kidding. Is El Toro really that small? Small? They had to widen the street before they could put the white line down the middle. <laughs> Oh, I heard. Well, that's funny. It looked like an industrious little place to me. When I passed by, I saw a bottle works. Bottle works, nothing. That's where my boys threw their empties on the way in. <laughs> well, that's where you ought to throw your boys on the way out. <laughs> anyway, as long as they're here, how about a band number? Okay. What are you going to play, Phil? I don't know, Jackson. Let's wait till it's over, and then your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> that's what I thought. Well, go ahead. Hold it a minute. Come in. Mr. Harris? Yes. Were you looking for something to take home to Alice? Yes, I was. Well, let's get going. I've only got a three-hour okay. pass. <laughs> this must be his day off, too. Please. Yes, sir, that was Phil Harris and his El Toro Tomcat. <laughs> playing your guess is as good as mine from the quiz program of the same name. And now, fellas... Hey, Jackson, look here. Now, why are you always panning my pan? Because they don't know one note from another. Right. Oh, what are you talking about? If those guys ain't great musicians, I'll eat their shirts. Oh, boy, do you protect yourself. You know they haven't got any. <laughs> 
great musicians. Yeah, great musicians. Now, you take Frankie, my guitar player. Now, he knows more about music than Oscar Levant. What? Yeah, Frankie was on information, please, twice. Now, when it comes to music, he can identify anything. Hey, Frankie, come up here a minute, will you? Okay. Now, get this, Jackson. Play something, Lou. That's enough. Okay, Frankie, what was it? Can I hear it again? Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay, Frankie, what was it? A piano. <laughs> well, I'll be... Phil, what's so wonderful about him recognizing a piano? He plays guitar. <laughs> Oh, excuse me. Uh, Phil, I found out how Frankie started his musical career. How? One day he was scratching his stomach and somebody slipped a guitar in his lap. <laughs> That's how. Well, all my boys started from scratch. <laughs> oh, Filthy, you're too clever to be in the musical world. <laughs> Phil, if you don't get shot after a gag like that, the Marines are out to lunch. <laughs> so cut it out. And now, fellas... Say, Mr. Benny, I was just up in a plane with one of those marine pilots Oh, and... oh, hello, Dennis. Hello. <laughs> Thanks. Say, Mr. Benny, I was just up in a plane with one of those marine pilots and... How, how are you, kid? Oh, I'm fine. That's good. Uh, what, uh, what were you saying, Dennis? He said he was up in a plane with a marine pilot. Oh, it's dangerous to go up on an airplane. You know what happened to my uncle? What? Well, he was up 5,000 feet in the air. Yeah. And the pilot said, I think I'll go into a bank. Uh-huh. So my uncle said, I think I'll go into a drugstore and stepped out of the plane. <laughs> your, uh... Your uncle, huh? Boy, was he mad. <laughs> well, I don't blame him. Yeah, the drugstore was closed. <laughs> Look, Dennis, forget about your uncle. And by the way, kid, thanks for driving me up here this morning. You're welcome. Uh, Dennis drove you up here? How come he didn't bring Rochester? Oh, I'm punishing him. He's got to stay in the house for three days. Well, what did he do now? Well, he tried to sell my camel to the cavalry. He told him it, told him it was a horse. <laughs> but, Jack, a camel has two humps on top. I know. He told them they were twin turrets. <laughs> Anyway, I'm not letting him out of the house till Wednesday. Say, I think I'll call up and check on him. Give me that phone, Mary. Here you are. You ought to be ashamed of yourself treating Rochester like a prisoner. Never mind. Number, please. Operator, give me Beverly Hills, Crestview 6, 7071. One moment, please. If he's escaped, he's going to get it. Leave me. Mr. Benny's residence, convict number 80464. Rochester, this is Mr. Benny. Oh, oh, oh! Hello, Warden! <laughs> Rochester, what are you doing? Three days, ain't that what you said? <laughs> I certainly did, and I hope this is teaching you a lesson. Yes, sir. Now, are you eating bread and water like I told you to? Yes, boss. It goes swell with the ham and eggs. <laughs> ham and eggs? Rochester. There goes my parole. <laughs> Never mind that, and keep the shade down. You're in solitary confinement. Gosh, boss, my cousin gets better treatment than this, and he works for Warden Laws. Rochester, your cousin was arrested and went to jail. That's how he's working for the warden. I know, but his ten-year sentence was up three months ago. Well, why doesn't he leave? The OPA won't let him. <laughs> oh, well, I don't care about that. I'm just calling to check and see that you don't escape. Oh, I wouldn't do that, boss. I'll be with you in a minute, honey. <laughs> Rochester, have you got a girl there with you? Yes, boss. Well, you get her out of that room. If I don't, the one in the closet will kill me. <laughs> Rochester!
Chester, how many girls have you got there? I don't know. Some of them jumped out the window when the phone rang. <laughs> well, I'll talk to you about that when I get home. Now, goodbye. Goodbye? Oh, say, boss. Now what? Can I go out for just a breath of fresh air? You don't have to, Rochester. There's an air conditioner in the house. I know, but it's fighting a losing battle with the camel. <laughs> I don't believe it. Now, goodbye. Goodbye. He's going to stay in that house for three days, and that settles it. Sing, Dennis. That was... That was Dennis Day singing, I've had that feeling before, and very good, Dennis. Very good. I'll tell it to the Marines. <laughs> Dennis, I just paid you a compliment. When somebody pays you a compliment, you're supposed to say thanks. Oh. I never saw such a dope. Thanks. <laughs> stop being so silly. Oh, Jackson, why don't you stop picking on the kid? I'm not picking on him. It's about time I got a little respect around here. After all, I'm the star of this program. Oh, sure, sure. Thanks, Mary. <laughs> and not only am I the star here, but it may surprise you to know that I've just signed a new contract with Warner Brothers. Who cares? I care. Next week, I'm starting a new picture, and they let me pick my own leading lady. You let you pick her. Who'd you pick, Jackson? Oh, you want to know, huh? Well, I'm not going to tell you. Okay. Say, Phil, how are things going at Slapsy Maxie's? Oh, fine, Mary. We're doing a terrific business. I mean, we're really packing them in. I'm not going to tell you. You can ask me a million times. <laughs> it won't do you any good, so there. Say, Phil, uh, I'd like to come over and catch your show some night. What time do you go on? Well, we do a dinner show, then we do one about 10.30, and then we do another one around 12 o'clock. You can ask me until I'm gray. I won't tell you. <laughs> No, sir, I'm not going to tell you. I was over at Slapsy Maxie's last night, Mr. Harris, and the food is wonderful. Thanks, kid. I'm glad you enjoyed it. You're just wasting your time guessing. <laughs> so you might as well give up. Jack, will you please... All right, if you're going to get mad about it, my leading lady is Alexis Smith. You can't even keep a secret around here. Alexis Smith? You see, you're blabbing it around already. Anyway, fellas, is she gorgeous? Tall, blonde, and beautiful. Thanks. <laughs> Dennis, I'm not talking about you. Anyway, I love to work with those tall girls. They're just my type. Well, Jackson, if Alexis Smith is your leading lady, you really got something there. Phil, I've not only got something there, I've got something here. I brought her with me. Fellas, I want you to meet one of Warner Brothers' most glamorous stars. You've seen her in The Constant Nymph, and she'll soon appear in The Adventures of Mark Twain. And here she is, Miss Alexis Smith. <laughs> Hello, Jack. Alexis, I want to tell you how happy I am that you came down here to be on my program today. Well, Jack, I kind of misunderstood the whole thing. You told me we were just coming down here to see the boys. Well? I didn't know I was going to be on your radio program. Well? In fact, until this afternoon, I, I didn't even know you had a program. <laughs> well, that's strange. You, you listen to the radio, don't you? Yes. Well, do you ever listen to Fred Allen? Yes, quite often. Well, then you must have heard about me. <laughs> oh, are you the one that Fred Allen's always talking about? That's me. Well, if, if he's lying about you, you ought to see a lawyer. You said it. And if he's telling the truth, you ought to see a doctor. <laughs> Isn't it funny, Alexis? I don't mind anything coming from you. And am I happy that we're going to make a picture together? I always wanted a leading lady who's tall and beautiful and... Hey, Alexis, look. Look, look at that Marine in the fourth row. See? What about him? He's looking at me. <laughs> Thanks, Max. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Which one? Over there, the fella holding his nose. <laughs> Oh, Alexis, I want you to meet my gang. First, Don Wilson, Phil Harris, and Dennis Day. Hello, boys. Well, fellas, what do you say? <laughs> I said, what do you say, not what do you think? <laughs> uh, 
Now, pay attention. Oh, Miss Smith. Yes, Dennis? I think you're a wonderful actress. I've seen you in all your pictures. You have? Yes, and someday I hope to see you in person. (laughs) What a silly kid. But don't worry, Alexis. He's harmless. I know he is, Jack. He's just a sweet little boy, and I like little boys. Come here, Dennis, and I'll give you a kiss. Those, those, those young kids get all the break. Oh, Dowdy, does this great big race? <laughs> Bill, Dowdy, does this great big way to give Bill, all Bill, us little boys a kiss? I want a kiss. I want a roll, kiss. Roll down your pants legs. You're not fooling anybody. <laughs> Oh, Alexis, Alexis, I want to introduce you to our comedian. Mary, I want you to meet not only a great dramatic actress, but one of the most beautiful and charming personalities in Hollywood. Miss Alexis Smith. Hello, Mary. I bet you're as old as I am. (laughs) Mary, Alexis, don't mind her. She's always been jealous of my leading ladies. Even Cedar (laughs) Barra? Oh, Smitty, you little vixen, you. (laughs) Say, Alexis, may I tell you how very much I enjoyed your performance in The Constant Nymph. You did a great job in that. Thank you, Don. Oh, yes, Alexis, I thought all the love scenes between you and Charles Boyer were quite thrilling. You know, originally, they wanted me to play that part. (laughs) Mr. Boyer's or mine? Mr. Boyer's, of course. (laughs) I, I could have taken his place. You couldn't take his place in a mustard bath. Oh, yeah? Well, I'll show you. Alexis, let's do that scene where you're pleading with Charles Boyer for another chance. You mean the one where I'm afraid he's going to divorce me and marry Joan Fontaine? Yeah, that's the one. I'll play Charles Boyer's part, which was Lewis in the picture. And I'll play my original role of his wife, Florence. Yeah, I just loved your English accent. Gee, I can remember that one scene so vividly. It just held the audience spellbound as you faced your husband grasping at the last straw of happiness. Music, please. Oh, shut up. Now, come on. Let's try again. Lewis, I want to talk to you. I'm very sorry about the roses, Lewis, but I thought you were the one who sent them to me. Florence, I know so well how you must have fared. And do you know how I feel now that you're going away? Take me with you. I'll go anywhere, anywhere you say. Well, well. If he says El Toro, I'll shoot him. Be quiet. Florence, I cannot let you say things like this. I mean it. I'm honest and I love you. The fact that I haven't completely understood you hasn't been all my fault because I've tried. And all the, all the time I've had the feeling that I was succeeding. And all the time I had the feeling that I was succeeding. Tip, tip. <laughs> Mary, stop her. You are attractive, Florence. You are young. You deserve so much more than I can ever be to you. I understand, Louis. You don't want me anymore. Give me another chance. I'm begging you. Gee. Look at me, Louis. <laughs> Don't tell me what's in your mind just now. I don't think I could stand it. Gosh. Lewis, you're going away for a while. You might miss me. I'll wait for you. And that will give us a chance to know what we mean to each other. She's wonderful. It is no use, Floyd. It can never be. I have thought it over. And all I can... Ah, shut up! <laughs> What's the matter with you? I am so sorry. I lose my temper. Now, stop that nonsense. Phil, will you take that kid out of here? It will be a pleasure. What's the matter with you guys? I don't care what you think of my action. We're going to finish this scene. Come on, Alexis. All right. But, Jack, you only have ten seconds left. I don't care. Come on, Alexis. Make it quick. Lewis, I want to talk to you. I'm very sorry about the quick, roses, quick, Lewis, but I thought you'd send them to me. I don't know what I mean. Say, and you know how I feel now that you're going away. Lewis, I'll go anywhere, be anything, do anything. Roy, I'm going to say things like that. I mean, if I'm honest, I love you. The fact Please, that I have you. The Great Nuts 
Jackson Grape Nuts Flakes program, coming to you from the Army Airfield at Muroc, California, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, Rochester, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we're broadcasting from the Army Airfield located on the dry lake at Muroc, California. <laughs> and we'd like to show you how Jack and the gang made the trip up here, so let's go back a few hours and pick up Jack and Rochester at the house. Shoo, 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 baby. Shoo, 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 baby. Bye, 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 baby. Your papa's going up to the Murat camp. Rochester. Don't cry, baby. Don't sigh, baby. Bye, 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 baby. They got a lake up there and it ain't even damp. <laughs> Rochester. We like to travel and entertain the boys. If they don't like us, they stick out their tongues and make a certain noise. Rochester. Oh, shoo, 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 birdie. Rochester. When I call, you answer me. Sorry, boss. I was just carried away by my soft, tender voice. <laughs> well, take off that bow tie. You're not making me swoon. Now, stop it. I don't say things like that when you play your violin. You don't have to. When I play my violin, I really put something in it. I don't know what you put in it, but what comes out is for it. <laughs> Never mind that. Now, Rochester, the bus will be here any minute to take us to the camp. Have you got everything ready? Yes, sir. I packed your shoes, your ties, your shirts, your snuggies, your radio, your pipe, your hot water bottle, your skis, your bath mat, your ashtray, your bridge... Rochester, I'm going to Muroc to entertain, not to enlist. <laughs> my goodness. Well, all I know is what happened to my cousin. What happened? He went to a camp to entertain. They gave him a gun and booked him into Guadalcanal. <laughs> Your cousin? Yeah. Japan don't know it, but the rising sun is going to be hidden by a dark cloud. <laughs> oh. Oh, 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 oh. Well, anyway, Rochester, I think we ought to... Oh, there's the bus. Okay, okay, we're coming. Come on, Rochester. Hey, let's get a move on. Okay, okay, driver. Well, it's about time, Bifogles. So what if it is? Say, driver, did you pick up anyone else in our party yet? Yeah, Don Wilson. He's sitting right in the middle of the bus. He is? Yeah, this greyhound wasn't sway back when I started. <laughs> <laughs> what an adult! <laughs> yeah, it does sag a little, doesn't it? Huh? <laughs> Oh, hello, Don. Hiya, Jack. Hello, Rochester. Hello, Mr. Wilson. Say, Jack, uh, what kind of a camp are we going to? Well, it's the Army Airfield at Murat. And you know, Don, there's a very exclusive place to eat there, Ma Green's. What a place. <laughs> Wonderful food. All right, driver, let's get going. We have to pick up Phil Harris uh, at uh, 619 Spring Valley. Rochester, you sit here. Okay. Shoo, 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 baby. Shoo, 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 baby. Bye, 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 baby. Your father's going... Here you are, Blue Eyes. 619 Spring Valley. Smart guy. Phil told me he'd be waiting in front of his house. Driver, give him the horn. I can't. It belongs to the company. Ah! <laughs> now cut that out. Or go back to Alan. Now just blow the horn. Oh, Phil! <laughs> Phil Harris! I guess he can't hear me. Rochester, you call. Okay. Call for Philip Harris! Phil, Phil was supposed to be ready when the bus arrived. I told him time and again when we make these trips to curl his hair the night before. <laughs> Darn it. Maybe it did, boss, and got it mussed up while he was sleeping. Well, maybe. You know, he can't take it off like you do. <laughs> Rochester, when I go to bed, I don't take my hair off. 
Well, you should. Every morning we have to shake out the blankets to find it. <laughs> Rogers, if you don't stop making up things like that, I'll get... Well, here I am, Jackson, ready to go. It's about time, Phil. It's about time. Hey, Phil, what kept you so long? Well, guys, Jackson, I had to say goodbye to Alice before I could leave the house. Hey, are you married to Alice Fay? Yeah. What do you want to leave the house for? <laughs> Look, at driver, stop being so comical. Just drive, will you? Okay, okay. Our next stop is 360 North Camden Drive. We have to pick up Miss Livingston. Okay, okay. Shoo, 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 baby. Uh, shoo, 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 baby. Uh, bye, 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 baby. Uh, do you hope that we don't get the falata? <laughs> Stop singing and get me to Miss Livingston's house. <laughs> Shoo, 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 baby. Shoo, 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 baby. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. I was waiting for you. Well, are you all ready? Uh Uh-huh. Say, Jack, do you notice anything? Oh, yeah. You're wearing a new dress. Boy, that sure is a glamorous outfit. Thanks. Do you think the soldiers will like it on me? Mary, they'd like that dress on a second lieutenant. (laughs) Or Harold Irwin. Anybody. (laughs) Now, come on, let's, let's... Let's get going. Okay. Say, Jack, are we going up to Muroc to visit the soldiers? Yes, why? <laughs> well, there's a switch if I ever heard one. <laughs> Mary, you always talk about going out with soldiers, and the minute one of them asks you for a date, you run home looking for your mother. Well, they always ask me to bring a friend. <laughs> what are you talking about? The soldiers wouldn't go out with your mother. Go on two weeks in Muroc, and they'd go out with you. <laughs> Well, it is a little dusty here. I'll admit it. <laughs> I'm not, though. Now let's. <laughs> oh, brother. Now let's let, let's go, or we'll be late. Uh, just a second, Jack. I want to go out in the kitchen and speak to Butterfly. She's taking the rest of the day off. Okay. Shoo, 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 baby. Shoo, 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 baby. Shoo, bye, 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 baby. Your mama's going down to Central Avenue. Butterfly? Butterfly, what are you doing? I'm cleaning out the ice box. Oh, why didn't you do it last night? I wasn't hungry then. Uh, make it uh, make it snappy, will you, Mary? Oh, hello, Mr. Benny. Hello, Butterfly. Mr. Benny, I wanted to tell you that I certainly enjoyed your program last week. Oh, was that the first time you heard it? No, that was the first time I missed it. <laughs> That's not much of a compliment, Butterfly. Oh, I meant that Miss Livingston brought the radio script home and I read it. Oh, I see. I've been reading it every day this week, and gee, <laughs> it's so it's funny. Well, thanks. Butterfly, did you like that joke about Miss Livingston going up in an airplane? You know, the one on page two? Oh, I haven't got that far yet. <laughs> I see. Well, we're going now, Butterfly, and I hope you enjoy your day off. Thank you. Uh, what are you going to do? Well, you know my boyfriend, my soldier boyfriend, Jerome? He's coming in from camp. He is? Yes. <laughs> I hope he proposes to me tonight. Well, there's, <laughs> there's only one sure way, Butterfly. Act hard to get. But Mr. Benny, he only has a three-hour pass. <laughs> Oh, I see. Come on, Mary. They're waiting for us. Goodbye, Butterfly. Goodbye. Shoo, 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 baby. Shoo, 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 baby. Bye, bye, bye. Say, Jackson, have I got a surprise for the gang this week? When we get up to the camp, my band's going to play some of that classical music. You know, that long-haired stuff. Phil, don't start anything you can't finish, will you please? <laughs> what are you talking about? I studied music. You studied music? Yeah. It took you two years to learn how to tap your foot. <laughs> you wouldn't have learned that if it hadn't been cold. <laughs> he he knows the classic. Well, I do. Ask me a question. Go ahead, ask me. All right. Do you know anything about Beethoven's fifth? Listen, Jackson, anything that comes in fifths or pints, I know about. <laughs> Now, 
That's what I thought. Phil, when we get to Muroc, just play the one number you know and keep your fingers crossed. What a guy. Shoo, 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 baby. Shoo, 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 baby. Bye, 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 baby. Your papa. Mary, off. stop with that song, will you? I'm sick of it. Well, I'm sick of Love and Bloom, too. Every time you go to a camp, you play it on your violin. The boys send in requests. I know, but you play it anyway. <laughs> I play it because... Hey, driver! Driver! Yes, yeah, son? <laughs> pull, pull up to the right. There's Dennis Day's house. Okay. You better double park the bus. There's no room there. Oh, I can get in between those two cars. I parked in a smaller space yesterday. Okay. (laughs) Say, driver... Are you sure you parked in a smaller place yesterday? Yeah, but now that I think of it, I was on a bicycle. <laughs> well, that that does make a difference. Now, uh, now blow the horn, will you? <laughs> oh, Dennis! Coming, Mother! <laughs> Me, Dennis. Oh. Now hurry up, kid. Take it easy. You don't have to run. The Dennis McCall. Hmm. Hello, Mr. Benny. What's new? Dennis, didn't you hurt yourself? Oh, no. I trip over our garden hose every day. Why don't you take it off the path and put it on the lawn? Well, why should I go out of my way to trip over it? Well, that's the silliest thing I ever heard. Come on. Get on the bus. Hello, fellas. Oh, hello, 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 Dennis. What a coincidence. What is? Seeing so many people I know on the same bus. Yes, it's a small world, isn't it, kid? Okay, driver, let's go. Say, Dennis. Yes, please? What number are you going to do on the program today? I thought I'd sing Smoke Gets in Your Eyes. Oh, yes, the boys will like that. Better rehearse it in the in the bus, will you, Dennis? Okay. Dennis, that was swell. And the boys at Muroc will love that song. Your voice sounded like a million dollars. That's what makes me mad. Why? You get it for practically nothing. (laughs) Quiet, Dennis. You're doing all right. Now, driver, make a left turn at the next corner and go to 2833 North Locket. Okay, baby, okay. Say, Jack, the cast is all here. Who are you picking up? I'm taking Alexa Smith with us. Alexa Smith? She was with us last week at the Marine Base. I know, Mary, but we're going to an army camp today, and the soldiers like to look at a pretty girl. Well, what do you think I am, a G.I. hamburger? (laughs) Mary, I meant that with both you and Alexis there, the soldiers would see two pretty girls. (laughs) It would be a novelty. You want to show them a novelty, let them look at you, a sad sack civilian. (laughs) Don't be sarcastic. Anyway, I was in uniform in the last war. Gee, I didn't know they had wax then. (laughs) Dennis, I wasn't a whack. I was in the Navy. Oh, a wave. (laughs) I was a sailor. Now, let's forget it. That's what the Navy's trying to do. (laughs) Oh, stop. And, Jack, you still haven't told us why you're taking Alexa Smith with us today. Because, Mary, she's the leading lady of the new picture I'm making at Warner Brothers. What's the name of it, Jackson? The Horn Blows at Midnight. The horn blows at midnight. Yes. A.M. or P.M. <laughs> Phil, if it's midnight, how could it be A.M. or P.M.? Listen, Jackson, I just get the laughs. I don't explain them. <laughs> because you don't understand them. Hey, driver, three more blocks, and it's the corner house on the left. Hokey, hokey, pokey. Hope oh, we don't get that guy. <laughs> I hope we don't get that guy on the next trip. Rochester, uh, give me my box of cigars, will you? Here you are. Thank you. There. Oh, boss, this is Sunday. Why don't you start fresh one? <laughs> this one, this one's only half gone. 
Now, uh, put the box away. Okay. Shoo, 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 baby. Shoo, 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 baby. Bye, 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 baby. Rochester, will you please stop singing that song? It drives me nuts. Well, driver. Yes, 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 Pappy. Yes, 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 Pappy. <laughs> now, cut that out. <laughs> and pull over to the left. This is Miss Smith's house. I can park between those two cars. <laughs> Never mind. Just wait right here. <laughs> Driver, you didn't have to blow the horn. I'm going in and get her. You're not fooling us, Jack. The only reason you're taking Alexis Smith to the camp is so you can get to kiss her. That's not the reason at all. Then how come every time her name is mentioned, your lips pucker up? <laughs> they do not. Hey, here comes Alexis now. Yeah, where is she? <laughs> where is she? Oh, hello, Alexis. Hello, Jack. Hop right in. Hello, Alexis. Let's see. Hello. Well, Alexis, we had a lot of fun at the last camp, but I'm sure glad you're coming up to Muroc with us. Oh, is that where we're going? Yeah. And believe me, the soldiers there will be glad to see you. Why? <laughs> Why? Hmm. Holy smoke, even I know the answer to that. <laughs> Well, the kid's getting smart. Uh, say, Alexis. They want her autograph. <laughs> Quiet. Uh, say, Alexis. Besides doing our broadcast at the camp, we're going to do an extra show. And that's when you and I will do a love scene from our new picture. You know, where I kiss you. Now, wait a minute, Jack. Are you bringing me up there to entertain the soldiers or you? The soldiers, of course. Well, on Pucker, we've still got 60 miles to go. <laughs> I'm only rehearsing, kid. Anyway, Alexis, remember, we do our program first, then later on we'll do the love scene. You better do the love scene first. You're not getting any younger, you know. <laughs> Mary, you keep out of it. After all, I've done love scenes with big stars before. You know, Alexis, I made a picture called George Washington Slept Here, and my leading lady was Ann Sheridan. I know, Jack. Annie told me all about you and your acting. Oh, really? Uh, what, uh, what did she say? Well... Go ahead, tell me. I won't get conceited. I guarantee you won't. <laughs> now, Alexis, stop teasing. Tell me, what did Ann Sheridan say? Well, um, Annie said there was no question about your acting ability. Uh-huh. But if there was a question, she was too much of a, a lady, lady to, to answer. answer. <laughs> I don't I don't quite understand, Alexis. Well, look, Jack. I saw you in that picture, and all the time you were making love to Anne, you were looking right into the camera. I was? Yes. I had a feeling your option was hanging on the lens. <laughs> Well, unfortunately, it was. Say, uh, Alexis, let's rehearse the love scene we're going to do at the camp. You know, where I'm going away. Oh, yes. Uh, the one where you leave me and kiss me goodbye, isn't it? Yes. Then I discover I forgot my hat, so I come back to the house. Oh. I get my hat, and I kiss you goodbye again. But, Jack, in that scene, you're only supposed to kiss me goodbye once. Well, I rewrote it a little. <laughs> anyway, anyway, I get my hat, and this time when I kiss you, I completely lose my head. Then you won't need your hat. <laughs> Mary. You see, Alexis, I've got the scene rewritten so it has a sustaining interest. When I go out, I kiss you goodbye. Then you go out and you kiss me goodbye. And for a change of pace, we both go out and we kiss each other goodbye. <laughs> but, Jack, instead of all this kissing, why don't we just stay in and play a game of gin rummy? Well, uh, I want a little excitement. So do I. <laughs> well, thanks. Come on, Alexa, let's rehearse the scene. All right. Now, this is the way we'll do it at the camp. <clears throat> you remember the one. Oh, yes. Ah, <clears throat> oh, my darling, I must leave you now. I'm going to Lancaster for a small coat. <laughs> Just a touch of cherry. Don't leave me, Felix. Felix? <laughs> Not tonight. Tonight of all nights. This is our anniversary. You can't leave me, Clap Saddle. <laughs> 
clap saddle. This will be the first time we've been apart. Don't go, Albatross. <laughs> Albatross, Alexis, stop changing my name. When she gets a jerk, she'll stick to it. <laughs> Mary, leave us alone. There's a magazine on that seat next to you. Pick it up and read it, will you? Where? Oh, Liberty. I haven't seen it this week. Good. Oh, my sweet. Yes, Clearwater. <laughs> you know that I don't want to go. You're all that I live for. You're the guiding light in everything I do. You're the sunshine that brightens my drab existence. And, Mary, if you turn to page 16, there's a story about me. It tells about my career and my home life and how generous I am. What a hit I was in vaudeville and pictures and on the radio. And what a great guy I am. Jack, who are you in love with, me or you? <laughs> oh, oh, pardon me, Alexis. Where were we? We just passed Ma Green's. <laughs> I didn't mean that. You were just about to kiss her, dope. I was? Oh, yes, I remember. Let's go on, Alexis. I must go now. <laughs> I must... <laughs> I must go now, darling. Kiss me. <laughs> well. Well. Well, how was that? Pew, 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 baby. Pew, pew, pew Mary, baby. I didn't ask you. You always have the fun. The Grape Nuts and Grape Nuts Flakes program. Ladies and gentlemen, in starting off a comedy show, it is customary for the announcer to say something humorous. But tonight I can't think of anything funny, and here he is, Jack Benny. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, uh, Don, did you make up that clever introduction all by yourself? Yes, Jack, I certainly did. You mean nobody even helped you with it? No, no, not a soul. You mean you hatched up that witty gem in your very own little fat head? <laughs> huh? But, Jack, I thought you said it was clever. Oh, it was, Don, but something happened to it when it came out of your big fat mouth. <laughs> That's oh, all. Jack, you're sore about it. No, no, Don, really I'm not. Believe me. I'm not sore at all. I'm very happy that you're my announcer. Really, I am. But, Jack, if you're not angry, why are you tearing up my contract? I'm not tearing up your contract because I'm angry, Don. I'm just making a paper doll that I can call my own. <laughs> Hey, Jackson, look. Now, why are you getting all steamed up? You get sore and excited and lose your temper just because Don makes a clever widow kiss him. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, the word is witticism. Anyway, I'm not sore and I'm not excited and I'm not losing my temper. Oh, Jack. Yes, Mary. Are you going to shave? Of course not. Why? It's a shame to let all that foam around your mouth go to waste. <laughs> Well, I've got a right to be mad. When Don introduced me, he inferred that I wasn't funny. Well, that's no military secret, Jackson. <laughs> Wait a minute. Let me ask you something. And this goes for the three of you. If I'm not funny, how come I've stayed in radio 12 years? Well, answer me. There must be some reason. <laughs> well? I know why I'm on the air, Mr. Benny. Dennis, you're a dope. That's it. <laughs> certainly is. Well, it's worth it. You told me yourself you're paying me $186,000 a week. Hmm. Dennis, Mr. Benny's only paying you $35. But because your song just runs two minutes, it's equivalent to $186,000 a week. Who cares about details as long as I get the dough? <laughs> well, I'll be... Dennis, when you get your check, what does it say on it? $186,000 or $35? $35. There you are. What does that mean to you? Large withholding tax. <laughs> Thanks, kid. You had me worried there for a minute. Anyway, how do we get to talking about your salary? This all started with Don's introduction saying I wasn't funny. Well, all I know is that last week, Fred Allen said, quote, Jack Benny has done more for sleep than sank a coffee. <laughs> Unquote. 
Look, Don, the next time you mention my name in the same breath with Allen's, please use sent them. Quote, <laughs> double strength, unquote. Ah, <laughs> uh, Jackson, I think you're jealous of Allen. I heard him last week and he was terrific. Phil, do... Do you listen to Fred Allen's program? Well, sure I do. Oh, you, uh... You do, huh? Well, you don't mind, do you? No, no. Why should I mind? <laughs> I don't care at all. <laughs> If you want to listen to Alan, it's certainly your privilege. Hey, wait a minute, Jackson. What are you doing with my contract? You know that paper doll I made before? Yeah? Well, I'm fixing her up with a boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Let's drop. Let's drop whatever we were talking about, including Alan. Well, you certainly are a hypocrite, Jack. When I came over to your house last week, Alan's program was tuned in on your radio. Well, that was a mistake. Rochester tuned it in while I was in the next room. Well, you could have walked in and turned it off. I would have, but I thought it was my camel I was smelling. <laughs> now, let's, let's change the subject. Dennis. Yes, please? Yes, please. Yes, please. <laughs> You've got a song ready. Let's have it. Okay. He hates me because I'm making $186,000 a week. <laughs> Dennis, if I hated you, would I be paying you that much? Now, go ahead and sing, will you, kid? That was Point Sienna, sung by Dennis Day and accompanied by Phil Harris. And now, fellas... Dennis Hoffenpfeffer. <laughs> All right, uh, that's, uh... That's, uh, that's enough, kids. Mm -hmm. And now, fellas... That was Point Sienna, sung by Dennis Hoffenpfeffer. <laughs> Gee, that's awful. Well, what's... What, what's awful about it? Well, how do I know Hoffenpfeffer can sing? <laughs> Stop, uh, stop being so silly, Dennis. Oh, you can call me Hoffy. <laughs> now, fellas, let's see, what was I going to say? I had something on my mind. Oh, yes, yes. Now, fellas, beginning next week, we'll have to do our rehearsing at Warner Brothers because I'm starting my new picture there. You know, the one I'm making with Alexa Smith. Oh, is that the horn blows at midnight? Yes, that's the title. And, oh, boy, just wait till you see it. It's a fantasy. You know, I'm a sort of an angel like Gabriel. And in the picture, I come down to Earth to blow a trumpet and destroy the whole world. You can do that with your violin. <laughs> I'm not playing a violin. I blow a horn. That's where the title comes from. The horn blows at midnight. Wait a minute, Jackson. Where'd you ever learn to blow a horn? Oh, it's easy. Sure, he just puts it up to his mouth and lets the air out of his head. <laughs> I do not. Anyway, when I get to Earth, I lose my angelic powers, and that's when I meet Alexa Smith. In the picture, her name is Elizabeth, and my name is Nathaniel. My name is Hassenpfeffer. <laughs> Dana, don't interrupt me when I'm trying to explain something. Now, where was I? You were letting the air out of your head. <laughs> Oh, yes. Well, anyway, <laughs> when, I, when I come down to Earth, I meet Alexa Smith, and that's where we're supposed to fall in love and have our big romantic scene. What do you mean, supposed, uh, Jackson? Well, Raoul Walsh, the director, wants to take the love scene out of the picture, and I can't understand why. I don't mind for myself, but poor Alexis will be heartbroken. Huh? <laughs> I don't understand why they took it out. Well, Jack, instead of worrying about it, why don't you go over to the studio and find out? Oh, I am, Don. Rochester is outside waiting to pick me up. In fact, I'd go now if I thought the program could possibly go on without me, you know? Well, go ahead, Jack. I can get laughs. Oh. Well, then you better come with me, Mary. <laughs> Phil, uh, Phil can play a band number. That's okay with me, but what do you want me to play? Anything, Phil. Just keep time. That's all I ask. <laughs> now, come on, Mary. So long, fellas. <laughs> You better tell Rochester which way to go. Oh, yes. Rochester. Yes, boss. Uh, make a left turn first. Now a right turn, then another left. Now go straight and make that first right turn. Now another left. Now make a right turn and then another left. Now a left. <laughs> Now keep going straight and... That's enough, boss. I can find my own way out of the parking lot now. <laughs> Good. Now, 
Rochester, uh, Rochester, right out to Warner Brothers Studio. Okay. Gee, I like working at Warner's, but I hope I don't have any trouble about that romantic scene. Oh, Jack, no matter who you make a picture for, you always have trouble. When you made Love Thy Neighbor, you had a big argument with Paramount. Well, I had the last word, didn't I? Yeah, but you had to phone it in from Warner's. <laughs> What's the difference as long as I'm healthy? What does that mean? <laughs> Say, Rochester, did you fix up my new dressing room yesterday? Yes, boss, but I got bad news. You have to move out of this one, too. Oh, for heaven's sake. What's the matter, Jack? First, they gave me Errol Flynn's dressing room, but they decided to paint it. Then they gave me Humphrey Bogart, but they had to put in a new floor. Then they gave me John Garfield, but they had to redecorate it. Now I'm getting pushed out of another dressing room. Rochester, what's the matter this time? Lassie came home! <laughs> Lassie? She works at MGM. What's she doing at Warner's? Well, you know the housing problem. <laughs> oh, well, animals have to be comfortable, too. Say, Rochester, did you feed the camel before you left the house? Yes, and then I put her out in the backyard. Good. I strung a clothesline between her humps and hung out the laundry. <laughs> well, you see, Mary, I told you we'd find some use for her. Oh, Rochester, here's Warner's. Now, drive us to the main office and go slow through here. I want to see Raoul Walsh, my director, first and get this thing settled. I don't think there'll be any trouble. Mary, that's Humphrey Bogart's dressing room. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. You know, I don't think I'll have any trouble about the love scene. <laughs> Uh, that's Betty Davis's dressing room. I think if I explain my viewpoint about that love scene to Raoul Walsh, he'll see it my way. I know, Jack. That's your dressing room. Yeah, I wonder what Lassie is so upset about. Maybe they want to cut the love scene out of her picture, too. See, Mary, see, I'm not the only one that gets it. Rochester, let us out in front of this building. Okay, boss. And come on, Mary. I want to see my director first, Raoul Walsh. His office is in here. Okay. Yes? Uh, I'd like to see Mr. Walsh. I'm Jack Benny. Just a moment, please. Oh, Mr. Walsh. Yes? Mr. Benny, to see you. Oh, Mr. Benny, huh? Yes, sir. Well, try number five. Yes, sir. Well? Mr. Walsh isn't in. <laughs> oh. He's at his tailor's having the cuffs put back on his pants. Well, will it be long? No, he likes his socks to show. <laughs> Well, I wish you'd try to get in touch with him. It's very important. I'll see if I can locate him. Just a moment, please. Mr. Walsh, he insists upon seeing you. Oh, well, try number eight. Oh, Mr. Walsh. No good, huh? Uh-uh. <laughs> well, try number three, Miss Stephan. Yes, sir. Oh, Mr. Benny. Yes? Mr. Walsh left his tailors, and on his way back to the studio, his car ran off the road and got stuck in the mud. He'll be there indefinitely. Mud? Why, it, it wasn't even raining. The studios can do anything. <laughs> well, gee, Miss, I wanted to get this thing settled today. It's really urgent. Can't something be done about it? Well, I'll try to locate him once more. Fine. I'll lay eight to five. Quiet. <laughs> Mr. Walsh, why won't you see Mr. Benny? After all, he is one of our stars. I know, but I'm sure he wants to beef about that love scene that was taken out of the picture. Well, why was it taken out? Did you see Jack make love to Ann Sheridan and George Washington slept here? No, I didn't. Well, when you make love to a girl like Ann Sheridan, you should take her in your arms and gently kiss her on the lips. Uh-huh. You're not supposed to grab her by the earlobes and pull yourself up. <laughs> Oh, I see. And anyway, the fact that the love scene is out isn't entirely my fault. Now, you tell Mr. Benny to take the matter up with the writers. Yes, Mr. Walsh. 
Oh, Mr. Benny. Yes? I spoke to Mr. Walsh on the phone. Yes? Oh, fine. They got telephones in the mud. <laughs> Mary. Mr. Walsh suggested you see either Mr. Hellman or Mr. Kern, the writers of the picture. I see. Well, thank you very much. Come on, Mary, let's go. Oh, Mr. Benny, would you mind giving this note to Mr. Hellman or Mr. Kern? No, 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 not at all. Come on, Mary. Thank you again. <laughs> Here we are. Sam Hellman and James Kern. Let's go in. Oh, hello, Mr. Benny. Hello. I'd like to see Mr. Hellman or Mr. Kern. Only Mr. Kern again. Well, will you tell him I'd like to see him and give him this note, please. It's from Mr. Walsh. Very well. Oh, Mr. Kern. Just a minute. I'm thinking. All right, Miss Fox, what is it? Jack Benny is here to see you. Oh. And he brought you this note from Mr. Walsh. Thanks. <clears throat> it says, don't try number five, eight, or three. It won't work. Well, then what shall I tell him? I don't know. Shall I try number 12? No, no, not number 12. That's for my wife. <laughs> now, uh, now, let me think. I know he wants to see me about that love scene we took out of his picture, but there's nothing I can do about it. Why not? Did you see the way he made love to Ann Sheridan and George Washington slept here? Yes. Well, Annie hasn't worn earrings since. <laughs> Well, Mr. Benny is waiting. What shall I tell him? Just a minute. Let me think. Quiet! Mr. Kern is shaking! Oh! <laughs> uh, let me see. Let me see. Okay, I've got it. All right. Mr. Kern is through. <laughs> tell Mr. Benny he'd better go and see Mark Hellinger, the producer. After all, he's the one who has charge of the whole production. Yes, sir. Oh, Mr. Benny. Yes? Uh, Mr. Kern is on the long-distance phone right now, so he suggests that you get in touch with Mr. Hellinger. He's right down at the end of the hall. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Come on, Mary. Oh, uh, Mr. Benny. Never mind. I'll try it without a note this time. <laughs> Come on, Mary. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Hellinger, Mr. Hellinger. Yes? What is it, Miss Jones? Jack Benny's here, and he'd like to see you. Oh, send him right in. Yes, sir. Go right in, Mr. Benny. Well, when he gets back, will you tell him that... What? <laughs> you can go right in. Mr. Hellinger wants to see you. Oh, oh, thank you. Come on, Mary. Don't rush in. It might be a booby trap. <laughs> Don't be silly. He's always glad to see me. Well, hello, Mark. Hello, Jack. When did you get back from Africa? <laughs> Why, Mark, I've been back for months. I'm going to start your picture pretty soon. Oh, yes, yes. Hello, Mary. Hello, Mr. Hellinger. Say, Jack, I understand that you're very anxious to get started with our new picture. Yes, yes, I am, Mark, but... Uh... And I hear that you're very, very happy about it. Oh, I am, I am, yes. But there's one little thing that bothers me. Oh, it bothered us, too, so we took it out. <laughs> What? You know, the love scene between you and Alexa Smith. Now, Mark, I personally think that the love scene is very important to the picture and should have stayed in. Now, why did you take it out? Well, look, Jack, this is a fantasy. You play the part of an angel, and Alexa Smith is an angel, too. So when you meet, there must be no thought of love. I know, but... Uh... We feel there should be no connection between love and anyone wearing wings. Well, now, that's silly. What about the birds and the bees? <laughs> Answer that. I wouldn't know. They're not on the contract to warn us. <laughs> You're evading the question. Now, look, Mark. I'm capable of doing love scenes. I've done love scenes before, and I can do them again. I'm good in love scenes. Jack, Jack, I'll take your word for it. Stop kissing me. <laughs> oh. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't think I was that close to you, you know? Well, if I haven't take it off his laugh. Mary, I got excited. I'm sorry. Now, look, Mark. I hate to get tough about it. 
But unless the love scene comes Hey, Mark, back... Mark. What is it, John? I got a new idea for the Jack Benny picture. You have? Yeah. Now, in my version, Jack makes his entrance as though. And that makes the audience think that he. So I have him coming around, but not the way you think, because Alexis would then be in a close-up while Jack. It isn't exactly her character, so we have to. <laughs> what? Hey, you got something there, John. But... You take that scene where he just about to, which comes after the one where he did, I have it where he doesn't. <laughs> but I want to. <laughs> I'm one of the stars. Well, what do you think about it, Mark? I think it's a great idea. That's the way we'll do it. Okay. Now, shall I empty the wastebasket? <laughs> hmm. Later, later. Now, look, Mark. Yes, Jack, what were we talking about? My love scene. I don't want to get nasty. But if that doesn't get back in the picture, you'll just have to get yourself another boy. Uh, excuse me, Jack. Hello? Yes? Just a moment. For you, Jack. Who is it? A Mr. Hosenpfeffer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hang up. It's that silly kid. Now, listen, Mark. I've got a contract here. And that love scene is going back in the picture, or... Well, Jack, I'm sorry. I didn't know you felt that way about it. <laughs> After all, we want everybody to be happy. We wouldn't think of hurting you for the world. Jack, look what he's doing to your contract. I know, and he's making the legs too long. <laughs> look, Mark, when you want to make a paper doll, you're supposed to shape the head like this. Then you come around the shoulders like this. Oh, yes. How do you make the arm? Well, that's easy. You see, you just tear it to one side with a little curve. See, like this. Then you go out a little for the hips. In a little for the thighs. A little curve for the knees. And then play down to the foot. From Roosevelt Base on Terminal Island, the Grape Nuts and Grape Nuts Flakes program starring Jack Benny. With Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, Rochester, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, we're all gathered here at the Navy's Small Craft Training Center at Roosevelt Base, Terminal Island. That is all except Jack and Mary, who are driving down. They should be here any minute as they left just a little while after we did. Canada Standard, we should have been there an hour ago. Well, it's your own fault for not following instructions. Gee, I hope we get there in time. Yeah. You know, Jack, we've played lots of Army camps and Marine camps, but this is the first time we've been to a Navy base this year. That's right, isn't it? Well, I'm glad we're going to Terminal Island today because there's something I just love about a Navy base. Really? What is it? Sailors. <laughs> oh, Mary, when we're, in a, when we're at an Army camp, you love soldiers. When we play for the Marines, you love Marines. Now we're going to a Navy base and you say you love sailors. What's the matter with you? Look, Jack, a uniform is a uniform as long as it isn't empty. <laughs> well, I can understand that, Mary. When I was in uniform in the last war, the girls were nuts about me, too. What, babes? <laughs> that was 25 years ago. It's about time you gave them up. <laughs> yeah, gee, I hope we're on the right road. I better take another look at the directions they wrote down for us. Here it is. Follow Highway 101 to San Pedro... Turn to the right and put on your brakes. Is that what they wrote down, put on your brakes? Yeah, they said if I didn't, I'd hear an awful splash. <laughs> I wonder what that could be. Probably us. That's where we crossed the drawbridge. Oh, for goodness sake. Isn't there some other way we can get over to the island? I hate going across those things. Jack, it's a drawbridge, not a toll bridge. <laughs> Oh, oh, now let's see. I wonder where we are. Oh, Rochester. Rochester. Yes, boss. Rochester, do you have any idea where we are? Well, let me see. An hour ago, we were in Wilmington. Uh huh. <laughs> Two hours ago, we were in Cucamonga. Uh huh. Three hours ago, we were in Azusa. Well, where are we now? Three hours from Azusa. Oh, for a minute I thought we were lost. 
Now, Rochester, while we're doing our show, put some gas and oil in the car and fill the tires with air. Oh, boss, not air from Terminal Island. The tide's out. <laughs> well, why not? Well, have you got a coal? Yes. Then I'll never be able to explain it to you. <laughs> What does he mean, Mary? Well, Jack, Terminal Island is where they have so many fish canneries. Oh. Why don't they do something about it? They do. It's the proving grounds for gas masks. <laughs> well, what do you know? Say, you better step on it, Rochester, or we'll be late. Okay. Say, Jack, we're almost there. That's right. There's the sign. What does it say? Four hours from Azusa. <laughs> It does not. It says, this way to Terminal Island. What's the matter? Say, hey, boss, this is a steep hill we're on. Well, you better put the car in second. <laughs> Gee, it is steep. We ain't gonna make it, boss. Well, give it a little more gas. Okay. Keep at it, Rochester. Hey, you, stop climbing up the drawbridge. <laughs> drawbridge? What'd you have to open it for? Is there a boat passing under? No, it's just a P-38 flying low. <laughs> oh, a wise guy, P-38. You expect me to believe such a silly... Watch out, here comes another one! <laughs> hmm. Now, what were you saying, buddy? Nothing. Look, Mary, the bridge is closing. Okay, Rochester, let's go. Hey, Jack. What is it? Uh, would you like your windows washed? Of course not. Then you better wait for the other half of the bridge to come down. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. <laughs> it's all right now, Rochester. Go ahead. Of all the silly things having a drawbridge there. And Rochester, uh -huh. drive straight along here till you reach the sentry gate with a big sign that says stop. Yes, boss. I wonder what happens if you don't stop. There ain't no one alive that can tell you. <laughs> well, you better start slowing down. There's the sentry. Oh. Who goes there? I'm Jack Benny. Don't antagonize him. <laughs> Mary. I hate to trouble you, Mr. Benny, but I'll have to see your pass before I can let you into the naval base. Oh, yes, yes, sure. See, Mary, no matter how important you are, you've got to have a pass. Now, let's see. Where did I put it? Uh, maybe it's in your wallet. No. In your change purse? No, I didn't put it there. In your money belt? <laughs> no, I didn't put it there either. Under your toupee? No. I... Oh, stop. <laughs> Say, I think I left my pass in my other suit. Your other suit, boss? Yes, in the inside coat pocket. Well, sure enough. Here it is. <laughs> Rochester, I thought that suit looked familiar. I told you not to wear any of my suits until they get a little shiny. A little shiny? Boss, you wear them until there's a searchlight in the stern. <laughs> Never mind. Here you are, sailor. Thank you. Uh, do I need a pass, too? No, miss. As long as your father has one, it's all right. <laughs> I'm not her father. Drive on, Rochester. There's the auditorium where we're doing the broadcast. He's a shame we're so late. Mary, turn on the radio and let's hear what the gang's doing. Okay. And here's another one for you, fellas. This is a Lulu. Don... Ask me why a sailor sleeps in a hammock. Okay, Phil, why does a sailor sleep in a hammock? Because he'd look silly laying there without anything holding them up. <laughs> oh, Philip, you buffoon, you. Imagine oh. a guy getting laughs with that kind of stuff. Drive faster, Rochester, before it's too late. Okay, boy. We'll ruin the show. Very good, Dennis, very good. That was my ideal sung by Dennis Day. And now, fellas... Okay, Don, I'll take over. <clears throat> You know, fellas, as I was coming down here today, that's I... That's uh... enough, Phil. That's enough. You can sack up your corn now. I'm here. <laughs> what are you talking about, Jackson? I got the audience warmed up for you. I told some gags that had them rolling in the aisles. Phil, while I was driving down here, I tuned in the program and heard one of your gags. You did, Jackson? Yes, and it's the first time a radio ever changed stations by itself. <laughs> 
You ought to cut that stuff out. Oh, what's the matter with you anyway? I pulled a gag and it got a big laugh, didn't it? Well, pull up your pants. The laugh is over. <laughs> You know, Phil, I don't mind a guy getting laughed by dropping his pants. But when you've got Abbott and Costello tattooed on your knees, that's going too far. <laughs> Not even Abbott and Costello do that. <laughs> they don't? No. Now, let's get on with the... Say, Mr. Benny, if you don't like Mr. Harris's joke, I've got a good riddle. Never mind. What is it that barks and has feathers? Barks and has feathers? <laughs> All right, what is it? A dog. Where do the feathers come in? It's a bird dog. <laughs> well, I'll be... <laughs> oh, Dennis, you hoss and pfeffer, you. <laughs> Look, kid, will you stop with that hoss and pfeffer? I had enough of it last week. What's got into you? Well, I'm going to change my name from Dennis Day to Dennis Hoss and Pfeffer. Uh, legally? Gee, that sounds nice. What? Dennis Legally Hoss and Pfeffer. <laughs> Well, that's the silliest thing I've ever heard. Dennis, why do you want to change your name to Hoss and Pfeffer? Day is such a simple name and so easy to remember, like Benny. Yeah, but that's going too far. <laughs> what do you mean? Benny, Dennis, legally Hoss and Pfeffer. <laughs> look, kid. Junior. <laughs> now, look, Dennis, I just got here and I want to talk to the sailors, so go over in the corner and sit down. Okay. Come on, pal. Dennis, who are you talking to? Legally. <laughs> well, anyway, fellas, I don't know how many of you know this, but I was a sailor in the last war, and I was at Great Lakes. That's about six miles from my hometown, Waukegan. But you know, fellas, when I was in the Navy in the last war, I was stationed at Great Lakes. And I'll never forget when I enlisted. What a day. Oh, I changed that to Hassan Pfeffer. <laughs> Listen, kid, I'm trying to tell the boys about the last war when I was a sailor. <laughs> Say, Jack. What? I bet you were a jolly tar. Well. <laughs> you a sailor. <laughs> now, what are you laughing at? Huh? <laughs> Remember last night when you put sugar in your coffee? So what? It made a wave and you got seasick. <laughs> Mary, did you make up that little joke all by yourself? Huh? No, one of your writers gave it to me. Well, if you just tell me which one, you'll save me a lot of money. <laughs> now, fellas, as I was saying, when I enlisted in the Say, Navy... Jackson, nobody's interested in what happened to you in the last war. They want to be entertained. Let Mary and me do a song. A song? Sure, you don't think the sailors just want to look at me. Well, did you and Phil rehearse a song? No, we're going to do it incognito. Oh, brother. Well, go ahead. Let me hear it. Come on, hit him, boy. <laughs> All right, don't be nervous. Don't be nervous. <laughs> that was You Gotta Talk Me Into It, Baby, sung by Dinah Livingston <laughs> and Phil Sinatra. <laughs> now, let's see. Uh, what was I uh, What was I talking about before your song? Uh, what you're always talking about, Jack Benny. Oh, yes, yes. When I was in the Navy. Well, it's a long story. I'm not going to bother about it now. No, no. Go ahead, Jackson. Tell them these sailors can take anything. No, 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 no. They don't want to hear about it. Okay, let's forget the whole thing. Mary, that isn't patriotic. <laughs> it was 1917. Our country was at war, and something, something kept pulling me to join the Navy. <laughs> It was two o'clock in the afternoon when I entered the recruiting office. I was eager, anxious, enthusiastic about my new adventure. Here he is, Chief. Okay, you can untie him now. <laughs> now, wait a minute. I was coming here to join the Navy anyway. Now, we'll stick to the business at hand, young fellow. First of all, your name. Jackie Benny. <laughs> your age. Sixteen. Sixteen? Yeah. How come you need a shave? If you didn't shave for sixteen years, you'd need one, too. <laughs> Wouldn't you? Never mind. Take this application and go into the next room for your physical examination. Thank you, sir. Just imagine me, little Jackie Benny, about to join the Navy. Hello, doctor. Hello. <laughs> The doctor, the recruiting officer, told me to come in here for my physical. Okay. Stick out your tongue and say, ah. Ah. 
My, my, what a place for an airfield. <laughs> an airfield? Why, that's the silliest thing. <laughs> What were you going to say, buddy? Nothing. <laughs> now I'll take this needle and give you a blood test. A blood test? Yes. yes. Sir. Roll up your sleeve. Like this? That's right. Now hold still. Steady. Will it hurt, doctor? <laughs> of course not. Good. Did you get any blood out of me? Yes, congratulations. <laughs> uh, thank you. And now I think I'll listen to your... Dr. Ferguson, Dr. Ferguson, call your wife immediately. Okay. Now, young man... Uh, but, Dr. Ferguson, they wanted you to call your wife immediately. Well, I always do. That's her name, Immediately Ferguson. <laughs> what a name, Immediately Ferguson. My name is Hassan Pfeffer. <laughs> Dennis, get out of here. This is 25 years ago. I'm playing the part of my father. <laughs> oh. Boy, am I going to have a son that's a Lulu. <laughs> Now, Doctor... Lulu Hassenfecker. <laughs> now, now, Doctor... Now, just a moment. Now, lie down on this rug and face the floor. Like this? That's right. Now, inhale. There. Now, inhale again. Once more. That's enough, and thank you. Say, Doc, what was the idea? I haven't had this place vacuumed all week. <laughs> Look, Doc, do I get in the Navy or don't I? Well, son, I'm sorry, but I'll have to report some bad news. For me? No, for the Navy you're in. <laughs> well, what do you know? All right, boys, all right. All you new recruits, line up for your uniforms. Uh, I take a size 34, please. Well. <laughs> really? Yes, uh, 34 ways. Uh-huh. Uh, 29 pants legs. Yes. And 32 sleeve length on the coat. Well, I'm glad you told me. Yes. Any particular color? Well, <laughs> would you happen to have something in blue? Blue? <laughs> Well, buddy, you certainly are in luck. I am? Yeah, it just happens that I've got three million left. <laughs> Gee, I am lucky. Yeah. Next. But, officer... Keep moving, keep moving. Where do I put on my uniform? Right here, as you're walking along. <laughs> as I'm walking along, but my old clothes. Oh, just drop them. We have chambermaids who'll come along and pick them up. <laughs> Come on, come on. Change your clothes, all of you. Oh, officer, I've almost got my uniform on. Good. Uh, would you mind buttoning me up? That goes in front. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, oh. Either take them off and change them or turn around and keep moving. Uh, yes, sir. And go over to that desk where it says assignment officer. Yes, sir. Gee, I'm a regular sailor now. Okay, buddy, stop mumbling to yourself and step up to the desk. Me? Yes, you. It's my job to find out what you're best suited for. Now, tell me, what just did you do in civilian life? I was a violinist. Oh. Well, I don't want to hurt your feelings, but I don't think they'll be able to hear you during the heat of battle. <laughs> Oh, I think they will. Uh, I play without a mute. I see. Now, tell me, young man, what part of the service would you like? Well, I'd kind of like to be a submarine. I mean, I'd like to be in a, I'd like to be in a submarine. That's fine. But, of course, you know that being in a submarine sometimes gives you the bends. Bends? And these pants, I wouldn't dare. <laughs> Anything else, sir? Nothing except to give you my congratulations. You're now a member of the United States Navy, one of the greatest fighting forces in the world. And now that you're a part of it, it's your duty to uphold its traditions and its honor. Yes, sir. Now, in starting your naval career, you will be stationed at Great Lakes, Illinois. Great Lakes? Gee. And let me give you a tip. 
If while you're there, you work hard and do a good job, who knows, but that someday you'll be sent to Terminal Island. (laughs) Terminal Island? Yippee! Gee, I wonder where that is. Four hours from Azusa! (laughs) Oh, yes! Play, Phil! I want to thank all the men here at the Small Craft Training Center, Roosevelt Base, for a grand reception today. It was a lot of fun being back in the Navy again. Next Sunday, we'll be coming to you at the same time from the Army Air Base at Marchfield, California. Say, hey Jack, I want to ask you something. What is it, Mary? Were you only 16 when you joined the Navy? Yes, Mary, that was about 25 years ago. But that would make you 41 now. Yeah. How did I get that extra year added on? <laughs> I must have been 15 when I joined, I think. The Grape Nuts and Grape Nuts Flakes program, coming to you from Marchfield Air Base of the 4th Air Force. Well, here we are broadcasting from the Army Air Base at Marchfield, California. And I know all you boys are anxious to meet the star of our show. So without further ado, we bring you a man who needs no introduction and is one of radio's best loved... Hello, Don. Hello, Mary. How are you? Mary, Mary, you butted in just as Don was going to introduce me. Oh, I'm sorry, Jack. That's all right. It's all right. Go ahead, Don. Okay. So, without further ado, we bring you one of radio's best-loved personalities. A man who, for the past 11 years, has brought joy and laughter... Hey, say, Don, you made a mistake. Jackson's been on the air 12 years, not 11. Oh, that's right. Hello, Phil. Hello. Phil, Phil, it was nice of you to correct Don, but you didn't have to do it in the middle of my introduction. Well, I'm sorry, Jackson. You should be. Go ahead, Don. Okay. So, without further ado, we bring you one of radio's best-loved personalities. A man who, for the past 12 years, has brought joy and laughter... Uh, Say, Don, you were right the first time. It is 11 years. Mary, it doesn't make any difference. No, Mary, it's 12 years. Jackson started on the radio in 1932. Phil, it doesn't make any difference. It was 1933. Look, Mary, it doesn't make any difference. It was 1932. (laughs) Phil, it doesn't make the least bit of... 1933, and that makes it 11 years. Now, wait a minute. Don is trying to introduce me. Anyway, 11 or 12, what's the difference? You haven't shot much crap, have you, Jackson? (laughs) Now, Don, never mind, Phil. Don, will you please finish my introduction? Okay. It's embarrassing. So, without further ado, we bring you one of America's best-loved personalities. Hello, Mr. Wilson. Who are you talking about? Dennis, please. Boy, am I sweating this one out. (laughs) Now, go ahead, Don. We bring you a man whose voice has been heard on the radio for the past 12 years. Gee, President Roosevelt. (laughs) Dennis, you... Well, I'll be darned. You see that fellow in the fourth row? A fine way to applaud Roosevelt. Clapping two Wilkie buttons together. (laughs) Look, Don, forget all about my introduction. Everybody keeps interrupting, and if you ask me, I think it's a put-up job. Well, to tell the truth, Jack, it was a put-up job. What? We didn't want Don to read that introduction because we have a surprise for you. A surprise? For me? Yeah. Okay, fellas, all together. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Jack Benny. Happy birthday to you. Well, gee. (laughs) Gee, thanks, fellas. There you are, Jackson, you see? Yeah, tomorrow is my birthday. Gosh, and you you all remembered it. How could we forget? You sold us a birthday card. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yes, the the ones with the pink ribbons on them, I remember, yeah. Say, that reminds me, Jackson, you owe me some change. I'll, uh, I'll give it to you later, Phil. When, when I, I break, break this $5, $5 bill. bill. Yeah. <laughs> you took the words right out of my mouth. You should open your wallet that wide. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, I'll pay you later. Well, anyway, kids, another year, another birthday. You know, it's amazing how many prominent people were born in the month of February. Washington, Longfellow, Lincoln... 
It's so hard for me to be outstanding. Oh, I can imagine. Of course, I don't want you to think for a minute that I'm comparing myself to a man like Washington. Why not? Washington wore a wig, too. (laughs) He did? Say, those Westmore brothers got around, didn't they? (laughs) Just think, Washington, Lincoln, and Benny. What a trio. Gee. I like the Andrews sisters. (laughs) Dennis, I happen to be talking about famous men in history. Washington, the father of our country. And Lincoln, the man who freed the slaves. If you'd ever break that $5 bill, you'd free Lincoln. (laughs) (laughs) Bill, I told you not to worry. You'll get your change later. But you know, kids, getting back to my birthday, the years come along so fast you can hardly keep track of them. They certainly do. By the way, Jack, how old will you be tomorrow? Uh, what, uh, what was that, Don? You heard him. Oh, oh, oh. Well, go ahead and guess my age. Go ahead, kids, guess. And the one that gets nearest to it gets fired. (laughs) (laughs) No, go ahead, kids. Go ahead, guess. 32? No. 33? No. 34? No. Are we going in the right direction? (laughs) (laughs) Yes, bud, but slow down. (laughs) Anyway, kids, Uh there's no use guessing. I'm not going to tell you. My age is my own business. (laughs) Well, you've been in business a long time. (laughs) Well, you can't make me mad today. Well, Jack, since you've been such a good sport, the entire cast and the orchestra boys and the writers all chipped in and bought you a birthday present. A birthday present for me? Yes, and here it is. Well, I'll be darned. Just what I've always wanted. A can of (laughs) K-rations. Gee, I bet you fellas envy me, huh? Hey, wait a minute. How do you open a can of K-rations? You don't open it. You just pull a pin, count ten, and throw it. Well, what do you know? Say, Mr. Benny. Yes, kid. You know what else? What? I'm going to sing my song now and dedicate it to you. Well, that's very sweet. Go ahead, kid. Let's hear it. Very good, yes, sir. Good fella, huh? That was They Say Me Mucho, sung by Dennis Day. Yeah, I couldn't pronounce that rehearsal. Very good, Dennis. And it was awfully nice of you to dedicate that song to my birthday. You know, Mr. Benny, I had a birthday about three weeks ago. You did? Well, that's nice, kid. And now... (laughs) And uh, now, fellas... Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday, dear Dennis. Happy birthday. Well, finish it. I forgot the rest of the words. (laughs) Oh, fine. And next week, he's going to try and sing Mersey Dose and Dozy Dose and Little Lambs and I Talk. Leave him alone, Mary. And now, fellas, as I started to say, I have a surprise. I have a surprise for you tonight. Since we're celebrating my birthday and you've all gotten into the spirit of the occasion so enthusiastically, I'm going to show my appreciation by giving each and every one of you soldiers sitting in the audience a 36-hour pass. <laughs> Yep, yep, that's what I'm going to do. Jackson, you're nuts. You can't give passes to all these soldiers. Well, maybe I did exaggerate a little, but the commanding officer here, Colonel Malin, said I could give one soldier in the audience a 36-hour pass. That is, if I can find someone who wants it. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, don't be silly, Jack. They'll all want the pass. Your problem is to give it away without showing any partiality. Yeah, that's right. How can I do it? It wouldn't be right to auction it off, would it? (laughs) (laughs) Or, uh, or maybe it would. Why, Jack Benny, that would be the cheapest thing you ever did. It would not. Why, I remember once three years ago in walking... Oh, stop bragging. Well, I know what I'm going to do. I have all the seats in the audience numbered, and later on I'm going to pick a number out of a hat. And the soldier holding that lucky number gets the pass. The well, serial, serial number. Well, congratulations, Jack. You invented a new game, G.I. Bingo. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, anyway, Mary, some soldier's going to get a 36-hour pass that he ordinarily wouldn't get. Rochester! Right,
Rochester, where are you? Pick up the phone! Pick up the phone! Pick up the phone? I didn't hear it ring. <laughs> well, I'll be... Excuse me, Don, I'll take it. Hello? Hello, this is Mr. Benny's residence. What? Star, stage, screen, radio, and television, if they ever get that stuff. <laughs> if they ever hurry up with that stuff, it's all right. <laughs> Rochester, you didn't have to be nice to me. It was all right. Rochester, there's something screwy going on, Rochester. Right now, you're talking to me from Beverly Hills, and a minute ago, I heard your voice here at Marge Field. Oh, boss, that must be a figment of your imagination. A figment? Yeah, that's something that you think is, and yet it could be, but it ain't. <laughs> what? Well, take my salad, for instance. Never mind that. <laughs> Well, I guess it must have been my imagination. I'm kind of excited today anyway. Now, Rochester, when I come home tonight... Wait a minute. Rochester, do I hear someone playing the piano in my house? Yeah, that was Joe. Joe who? Joe Figman. <laughs> now, cut that out. Rochester, you're throwing a party. Well, boss, I thought as long as you were out, I'd invite about 30 of my friends over. We're celebrating New Year's. <laughs> New Year's? That was six weeks ago. I know, we're warming up the next one. <laughs> well, look, Rochester, I don't like wild New Year's parties in my house, especially in February. So tell your friends to go home. But, boss, you got the wrong impression about this party. All we had is two bottles of 7-Up. <laughs> two bottles of 7-Up for 30 people? That's impossible. Not when you thin it out with a case of 90-proof Central Avenue tomatoes. <laughs> Fine tomato juice. Well, I'm not going to argue with you any longer. I'll see you when I get home. Oh, Jack, before you hang up, find out if Butterfly's there, will you? Okay. Oh, Rochester's Butterfly there with you? Yeah, she's in the kitchen making sandwiches. Well, Miss Livingston wants to talk to her. I'll call her. Oh, Butterfly? Yes, Uncle Rochester? You want on the telephone, honey? Oh, goody. I was expecting this call. Hello, Jerome. <laughs> Butterfly, this isn't Jerome. Oh, who is it, Satchmo? <laughs> no, it isn't Satchmo, it's Mr. Benny. Miss Livingston wants to talk to you. Here you are, Mary. Okay. Uh, Butterfly, this is Miss Livingston. Hello, Miss Livingston. Now, Butterfly, when you told me you were going over to Mr. Benny's house, I didn't know your Uncle Rochester was throwing a party there. Neither did I. Isn't it a pleasant surprise? <laughs> yes, very pleasant. Oh, Miss Livingston, I hope you won't be mad at me, but I wanted to look nice, so I used your bottle of liquid stockings. Uh, my bottle of liquid stockings? Yes. How much do you have to drink before it goes to your leg? <laughs> Butterfly, you're not supposed to drink that. You're supposed to put it on with your hands. Oh, I tried that. And what happened? I got a pair of gloves. <laughs> well, Butterfly, the next time you want to borrow anything, ask for it, and I'll tell you how to use it. Yes, ma'am. And another thing, Butterfly, I think you're too young to go to your Uncle Rochester's party. Oh, Miss Livingston, it's a very nice party. We were just sitting around listening to your program, but we had to stop. Why? Well, Uncle Rochester the radio, and all the tubes blew out. <laughs> Butterfly, I think you better go home, and I'll see you when I get there. Goodbye. Goodbye. Mary. Mary, I'm glad you got off the phone, because now I got a big surprise for all the boys. Oh, are you going to give out that 36-hour pass? Yes, at the end of the program, but right now I have another surprise. You know, fellas, last summer I was overseas entertaining the boys, and in our USO unit was one of the most outstanding artists that I've ever been associated with. I'm speaking of Larry Adler, the world's greatest harmonica player. And did they go for him? I'll never forget one night in Algiers. The boys were all gathered around in a circle. The moon was shining as the melodic strains of his harmonica floated out over the desert. How 
How I remember that night. And when Larry finished his first number and the cheering died away, a hushed expectancy fell over the crowd. Remember, Larry? Yes, Jack. And there in the desert night under the same romantic moon, the whole audience moved in closer so they wouldn't miss a note of the haunting strains of... Ah, remember that, Larry. I'll never forget it, Jack. <laughs> Your playing was absolutely wonderful. Oh, Larry, it was nothing, nothing. Oh, then you know. <laughs> yeah, but Larry, we sure had a wonderful time on that trip, didn't we? Yes, Jack. Remember the day we went to the bazaar in Cairo and you bought a camel? A camel. I'll never... Gee, I could just see it now. The bazaar in Cairo. Cairo, Egypt, where east meets west where an ancient civilization mingles with the 20th century. Cairo, the bazaar. <laughs> well, well, here we are, Larry. <laughs> Larry, here we are in a real Egyptian bazaar. Did you ever think we'd... Did you ever think we'd see anything like this? Gee, this is even better than the Leia Leia room at the Mission Inn. <laughs> yeah. Gee, I hope I can buy some nice souvenirs here. Well, remember one thing, Jack. You've got a bargain with these people. Don't accept their first price. I see. You must try and get everything as cheap as possible. As cheap as possible? Don't let me forget that, will you, Larry? <laughs> Oh, here, here comes the clerk. Now, remember, Jack, bargain with him. Don't let him stick you. I won't. Salam alaikum, khawagat. Marhab Saeed. Tfaddalu, tfaddalu, fed dukkan. That's too much! <laughs> what do you think we are, sucker? What do you think we are, suckers? <laughs> None of that stuff. But, Jack, look, he was just bidding you welcome. Oh, oh, oh. Well, look, Larry, I want to buy something for Mary. Maybe a bracelet and gold filigree that'll cost about 30 piastres, you know? Jack, 30 piastres is $1.60. A <laughs> $1.60? Oh, well, it's for Mary. How often do I come to Egypt? <laughs> Go ahead, Larry. You speak a little... You speak a little Arabic. Ask him if I can have the gold bracelet for $1.60. Okay. Anda kasura, dahab? Cam. What did he say, Larry? He wishes he was on your draft board. <laughs> oh. Well, let me handle this, Larry. I'll talk to him. I can... Uh, now, look, mister. Me like him, buy him, gift him. If not, cost him too much. Savvy? Oh, how interesting. An American Indian, I presume. <laughs> I'm not an Indian. I got red in the face waiting for the Riverside bus. <laughs> now, look, mister, as long as you understand English, where, what can I buy here that's a little souvenir of Egypt? Gentlemen, I sell everything from a postcard to a camel. A camel? Say, that's an idea with a gas sword. Gee, what a surprise when it arrives in Hollywood. Okay, mister, I'll buy a camel. Very good, sir. Will you take one hump or two? <laughs> oh, is there a... Is there a difference? Oh, certainly, sir. A one-hump camel can go seven days without a drink. And a two-hump camel can go 21 days. Oh, really? Well, what does he keep in his second hump? Pepsi-Cola. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, okay, mister. I'll take the two-hump camel and a bottle opener. Yes, sir. <laughs> hmm? The camel is yours. Where shall I deliver it? A Shepherd's Hotel here in Cairo. I'll pick it up in the morning. Oh, wait a minute. Is there a charge for delivery? Oh, no, sir. Well, then send it to 360 North Camden Drive, Beverly Hills, California. <laughs> Come on, Larry, let's go. Gosh, what a wonderful street this is. Larry, listen to that. That's real native music. Just the kind you were so anxious to hear.
The Grape Nuts and Grape Nuts Flakes program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, Rochester, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as our show opens today, we move the clock back a few hours and take you to Jack Benny's house, where Jack is entertaining his friend, Groucho Marx, and Rochester is busy cleaning up the library. My heart tells me this is just a... My, my, this library show is dusty. Must be 50 shells in here. I wish Mr. Benny would get books for him. <laughs> mm, this room certainly looks empty. Just a pair of bookends holding up a social security card. <laughs> My heart tells me this is just a fling. Yet you say our love means everything. Do you mean what you want? <laughs> Hello, Mr. Benny's residence. Oh, hello, Sam. What's the good word? I can't get off today. And even if I could, I wouldn't participate. I made a New Year's resolution not to play dice anymore. I can't show you the resolution. I lost it in a crap game. <laughs> anyway, Sam, I'm too busy. We have company. I don't know. Some grouch by the name of Marx. <laughs> oh, oh, Rochester... I'll be with you in a second, boss. I gotta say goodbye now, Sam. See you Wednesday. Oh, well, I'll see you Friday. The game ought to be over by then. <laughs> so long. Rochester, we're out in the patio. Coming! Boy, that was a tough game, wasn't it, Rocco? Yeah. I, I never thought you'd beat me. Groucho, Groucho, would you, would you like to start another game, or do you want to rest first? I don't need any rest, so only this time you set up the checkerboard. <laughs> okay. Of course, I could get Rochester to set it up. No, no, that way we wouldn't get any exercise at all. That's right. Did you call, boss? Uh, Rochester, Mr. Marks and I just finished our game. We'd like a drink. I want a Coke. What would you like, Groucho? Right now, I'd like Hedy Lamar, but my sponsor wants me to say Blue Ribbon Beer. <laughs> oh, well... I'll have, a, I'll have a man-to-man talk with my sponsor. I'll talk to him about the birds and the beers and... The... <laughs> Groucho, please. You're sorry you didn't think of that line, aren't you? Yeah. Well, that makes two of us that are sorry. <laughs> Come on, Groucho, let's play. Which checkers do you want this time, the blacks or the reds? Doesn't make any difference, Jack. I'm colorblind. <laughs> colorblind? Sure, the minute I came in, I gave my coat to you and shook hands with Rochester. <laughs> that was me. I spent last week in Palm Springs. I couldn't get a room, so I had to sleep out in the sun. Well, that wouldn't be so tough if you combed your eyebrows down over your eyes instead of up over your scalp. I never thought of I never thought of that. I didn't think of it either. I just read it here in the script. <laughs> I read anything they put in for me. What? Yes, sir. Here's your Coke, Mr. Benny, and Mr. Marks, here's your bottle of beer. Thank you, Rochester. That'll be 15 cents. <laughs> Rochester, Mr. Marks happens to be my guest. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Marks. There's no charge for the beer. Thanks, thanks. Say, how about a bottle opener? That'll be 15 cents. <laughs> Rochester. Jack, I thought the ticket I bought at the front door covered everything. <laughs> it does, Groucho. Now, here, uh, here's your drink. Fine-looking beer. Glass of grape nuts with a head on it. <laughs> oh, I could say as much for you. <laughs> Joe, stop clowning and let's get on with our game of checkers. Okay, it's your move. So it is, so it is. <laughs> Let me see. I think I'll move this next. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> no, I, I think I'll move this one. <laughs> what have you got there, a butler or an outboard motor? <laughs> 
What? Oh, oh, now let me see. Oh, yes, I think I'll move this checker. Don't! Huh? Don't throw bouquets at me! What? It's a very subtle game. <laughs> now, let's see. Maybe if I move this one. Wait! Huh? Wait till it's sunshine! Wait! La, 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 la. Hmm. I wish Frank Sinatra was on my side. <laughs> Let me see. Maybe if I move this one. Yes, I think I will. Now, wait a minute, Jack. Don't you want to wait till you hear from the hit parade? <laughs> now, wait a minute. Oh, I know. I'm going to move this one. My eyes tell me that is not the one. Huh? Unless you're playing just for fun. What? Do you know what you want to do? Quiet, Rochester. I'm, I'm trying to concentrate. This is the first time I've ever been to a checker recital. <laughs> now, let's see. I'd have been better off if I'd pay for the beer. <laughs> Say, Jack, we each have eight checkers left. Uh, how about doubling the bet? Well, oh, I don't know. All right, let's leave it a nickel. <laughs> yeah, if we make it any more, it takes all the fun out of the game. Oh, say, Groucho, look, before we play anymore, I want to show you a trick. Watch me, watch me balance these five red checkers on my fingernails. Look. Hey, that's a pretty good stunt. Uh-oh, boss, here comes your crazy boarder, Mr. Billingsley. Oh, yes. Hello, Mr. Billingsley. Hello, Mr. Benny. Getting a manicure, I see. <laughs> no, no, I'm playing checkers with a friend of mine. This is Groucho Marx. How do you do, Mr. Billingsley? Now, don't tell me your name. Let me guess. It's Groucho Marx. I'll get it. I'll get it. Give me time. Mr. Billingsley, it's Groucho Marx. <laughs> Mr. Billingsley, if you don't mind, we're trying to play a game of checkers. Oh, then I'll run along. Goodbye, Mr. Benny. Goodbye. Oh, I haven't seen her in years. <laughs> Come on, Groucho. Let's continue with the game, huh? Say, Jack, uh, what's that peculiar odor I smell around here? Oh, that's my camel. I think I'll get one for my house. I need an excuse, too. <laughs> well, let's get on with our game. Gee, Groucho, isn't California wonderful? Here it is February, and we're sitting outdoors in our shirt sleeves, playing checkers. <laughs> You're right, Jack. It's a beautiful day. Not a cloud in the sky. Yeah. And say, isn't it... Groucho, isn't it funny how all of us radio comedians kid about the California weather? Yes, and try to make people believe that the sun doesn't always shine here. You said it. Go ahead, Groucho. It's your move. Now, let me see. Uh, I'll move this one. All right. Then I'll move here. Just a moment, Jack. That's off the board. Oh, oh. Oh, then I'll move here. Go ahead, Groucho. Now, let's see. Uh, I'll move this one. Well, that makes me move this one. That is a pretty clever move, Jack. Now, uh, let's see. Uh... Well, I'm afraid you're going to lose this game, Groucho. Hmm? Oh, I don't care, Jack. Just sitting here looking at you is sheer ecstasy. <laughs> Keep your mind on the game, Groucho. Who moved last? I did. Hey, wait a minute. Look what time it is. My goodness, I have to go over to the studio for my broadcast. Say, Groucho, do you want me to drive you home? No, thanks. I'll just wait here and catch my house as it floats by. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, you, uh... You do live upstream, don't you? <laughs> Just above the dam. Yes. Yes, we come down and spawn during the month of May. <laughs> see, I got to pick up Mary and take her to the studio. So, great. say, Groucho, why don't you come along and see my program? All right, but don't forget, you're coming over to my program next week. Okay, Groucho, it's a deal. Okay, oh, goodbye, Jack. Oh, you better come in. Why? That California dust is coming down in buckets. <laughs> oh, it is a fan. Come on in, Groucho. 
Oh, Butterfly. Butterfly. Yes, Miss Livingston? Uh, Mr. Benny's picking me up in a few minutes, and I don't know what dress to wear. Well... You think it'd be all right if I wore my green dress with my brown coat? Oh, it's all right with me if it's all right with you. Well, the only trouble is, when I wear that green dress, everybody keeps looking at me. You should worry, as long as you got it on. <laughs> I suppose so. Anyway, Mr. Benny always likes to see me nicely dressed at the broadcast. I wish you were here now. Well, don't worry. Your green dress looks awfully pretty. Well, I'm not worried about the dress now. I'm thinking about the shoes. I don't know whether he'd like me to wear high heels or low heels. I think Mr. Benny is a low heel type. <laughs> Butterfly, what do you mean? I mean he'd like you to look shorter than him. Oh. Now take my boyfriend, Jerome. He always wants me to wear high heels. Why? Does he want you to look taller? No, he likes to trip me. <laughs> trip you? Well, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Oh, that must be Mr. Benny now. I better hurry along, Butterfly. See you when I get home from the broadcast. All right. Goodbye, Miss Livingston. And I hope you'll be very funny on the program. Well, thanks, Butterfly. I'm glad you're interested. Oh, it's not that. But when you don't get lost, I can't show my face on Central Avenue. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll try my best. Goodbye. Bye. Mary, hurry up. We'll be late for the program. I'm coming. I'm coming. Hello, fellas. Hiya, gang. Here we are. Hello, Jack. Hiya, Mary. Hello, Mr. Benny. Don. Don, are we ready to start the show? Well, Jack, the show's been on ten minutes. Oh. Oh, that's right. Is everybody here? Yeah. Good, because I've got a big surprise. Now, ladies and gentlemen, tonight for our feature attraction, we're going to do one of our great mystery melodramas entitled, Who Put the Thumbtack on Mrs. Gilroy's Davenport? Or... <laughs> Now, in this play... <laughs> in, this, in this play, I will once again be that master super sleuth, Captain O'Benny. And Phil... Oh, for heaven's sake, Jack. Every time we do one of these plays, you always want to be the captain. Yeah, why don't you let somebody else be the captain? All right, Phil, you can be the captain. I'll be the sergeant. Well, it's about time I got a decent part. All right, all right, you're the captain. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as the scene opens at police headquarters, the captain is found dead. <laughs> Which immediately promotes... Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Is something wrong, bud? Well, I want to be the sergeant. You be the captain. Well, if you insist, Bill, you're the sergeant. Now, Dennis, you're going to be my expert on fingerprints. What's a fingerprint? <laughs> Look, kid, when you put your hand on a doorknob, pull the door open and go inside, what do you leave on the doorknob? My glove. It's too big for me. <laughs> I don't mean that. Oh, I'll explain it to him, Jack. Look, Dennis, did you ever see Mr. Benny eating in a restaurant? Yeah. Well, a fingerprint is what he leaves on the table for the waitress. <laughs> Very funny. Who told you that joke? A waitress. A waitress, I know. <laughs> Bill, you and Dennis will be my assistants, and Don, you're going to be the murdered man. The murdered man? Yes. You don't mind, do you? Mm, oh, no, not at all. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, this mystery melodrama will go on immediately after Dennis sings his song. Go ahead, Dennis. Okay. Oh, well, Mr. Benny, before I sing, there's something I'd like to ask you. What is it, kid? Did Mrs. George Bernard Shaw leave you anything? <laughs> No, no, Dennis. Go ahead and sing, will you? <laughs> that was I've Got You Under My Skin, sung by Dennis Day. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our mystery melodrama entitled... Hey, Jack. What? Did you hear Fred Allen's program last week? Well, I was driving along in my car listening to the radio just as Allen was coming on the air. Oh, then you heard him. No. Fortunately, I had a wreck in the nick of time. <laughs> What happened on Alan's program? Well, he was talking to Luella Parsons about the book she wrote. Oh, the one about all the leading radio and screen personalities? Yes, and Alan said if she tore out the pages about you, the book would sell for a higher price. Oh. Well, Alan was just mad because his life story was so short. Born in Boston, died in vaudeville. <laughs> Buried in radio. <laughs> there. Anyway, Mary... That book Luella Parsons wrote is really swell. 
It's called The Gay Illiterate. Hey, wait a minute, Jackson. Don't get personal. <laughs> Bill, I wasn't talking about you. I just mentioned the title of the book, The Gay Illiterate. Yeah, there's nothing wrong in being gay. <laughs> Thank you, kid. Anyway, getting back to Alan, I could tell you more, but since this is Good Fellowship Week, I must admit that deep in my heart, I love Fred Allen. And now, folks... Say, Jackson, that reminds me. You know, the magazine Billboard had a radio editor's poll and they voted Fred Allen's program the funniest on the air. Oh, they did, eh? Well, let me tell you... Jack, Jack, this is Good Fellowship Week. Oh, yes. Congratulations, Freddie. (laughs) And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our thrilling mystery melodrama entitled The Gilroy Murder Case, or... He must have been a sword swallower because the stabbing was an inside job. (laughs) That sounds like a Groucho Marx if I ever heard one. (laughs) The scene opens... The scene opens behind closed doors... The scene opens behind closed doors at police headquarters where we find that rough, tough, hard-bitten super sleuth, Captain O'Benny. Curtain. Music. Lay that pistol down, babe. Lay that pistol down. Captain O'Benny! Woo! <laughs> I wish you wouldn't scare me, O'Harris. I'm alone here, you know. Now, what is it? Well, Sergeant O'Day and me want to know if you have any more assignments for us. More? What happened on that Langley murder case I sent you two to investigate? Oh, that we did, sir. (laughs) That's right, Captain. We went over there, but we found the man dead. Good. What did you do? We buried him and went home. (laughs) Fine bunch of assistants I've got. Now, listen, men. I'll take it. Hello, police Captain O'Benny speaking. Oh, Captain, Captain, this is Mrs. Gilroy. Yes? Come over to my house at once. My husband was murdered. Murdered? When? Now. (laughs) Now? Yes, he ate a good breakfast, but I did a better job. I see. Well, we'll we'll be right over. Goodbye. All right, men, there's been a murder. Close the doors and don't let anybody out. But, Captain, it didn't happen here. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Come on, fellas, let's go. The police car's outside. And we'll find the murder of Mrs. Gilroy's husband, or my name ain't Clearwater, Clapsaddle, O'Benny. <laughs> She is now. We're the police. Are you the widow? Yes. Oh, poor Donald. He was such a good husband. Oh, Donald, why did you leave me? I know how you feel, Mrs. Gilroy. (laughs) And what an ordeal I'll have to go through. You see, Donald loved my voice, and I promised him I'd sing at his funeral tomorrow. We're going to bury him today. Quiet and cut out the dialect. Oh. I hope he hears me. Oh, my poor Donald. You, you promised your husband you'd sing at his funeral? Yes. Mersey dose and dozy dose and it'll last a divey if it's a dive too, wouldn't you? Oh, poor, poor Donald. I'm sorry, man. Hey, Chief. What? I happen to know that yesterday Mrs. Gilroy took out a million-dollar insurance policy on her husband. Uh Then she went out and got herself a pistol permit. Then she bought a sharp knife, an axe, and a pound of arsenic. (laughs) That must have been Phil Harris's line. (laughs) Hmm. Well, then what killed him? Measles. (laughs) Oh, yes. X marks the spot. Oh, my poor husband He's gone And left me with seven children Seven little children that I'll have to raise myself Oh, why did he have to die and leave me to care for those poor little innocent darlings? Oh, why, why, why? 
Wait a minute. Calm down. You haven't any children. I know, but this is the week of the Academy Award, and I thought I'd make a stab at it. <laughs> well, forget about it. Come in. Say, I understand that a man was murdered here a couple of hours ago. That's right. What do you know about it? Nothing. I just want to read his room. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sorry, but his room's not for rent, honey. Okay. Goodbye, honey. <laughs> Aha, my first suspect. What are you talking about? I never saw that man before in my life. And why did you kiss him? This is good fellowship week. <laughs> oh, yes, I keep forgetting. Well, I'm going to search this room. Now, listen, Mr. Gilroy. Hey, Chief, Chief. What is it, O'Day? Would you think a man is guilty if you saw him running around with a smoking gun in one hand, a bloodstained knife in the other, and he just kept screaming? I did it. I did it, and I'm glad. I tell you, I'm glad I did it. Ha! <laughs> I'm glad I did it. <laughs> Why, of course that man is guilty. Well, if I see anyone like that, I'll arrest him. <laughs> that O.J. is a great detective. Now, listen, Mrs. Gilroy. I'm going to search this room to find the murder of your husband. I'll look in this closet first. Ah, here's a gun. Put it in your handkerchief, O'Harris. In my handkerchief? Yes, then you won't erase the fingerprint. Okay. Now let's... O'Harris, what happened? I shouldn't have blown my nose with it. <laughs> That's all right. You look better that way. <laughs> now, come on here, O'Harris. Let's go out in the backyard and look for more clues. Yeah, it's too nice a day to be inside. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, look. A bar face down on the grass. Yeah, and he's wearing a checkered suit. A checkered suit? See, that gives me a great idea. Can you play checkers, O'Harris? Yeah, Chief. Then what are we waiting for? Sure, we can use the buttons for checkers. Okay. It's your move, O'Harris. Now, uh, let's see. Okay, I'll move this one. Okay. I think I'll move this one. All right, I'll jump you. Oh, go on. It looks like you got me cornered this time. Well, let's see. I'll move this one here, and then we... Groucho, Groucho, I'll see you on your program next week. Good night, everybody. Good night. The Jack Benny Program. And now, ladies and gentlemen, tonight we're broadcasting from the world-famous Hollywood canteen. Yes, the Hollywood Canteen, where hundreds of thousands of servicemen come to see stars like Dorothy L'Amour, Betty Grable, and Lana Turner. That's right. <laughs> so, without further ado, we bring you a man dressed in a sarong, showing his legs, and wearing a sweater, Jack Benny! <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, I hate those corny introductions. You don't have to make up a lot of silly things just to be funny. But Jack, I didn't make anything up. For one thing, you are wearing a sweater. So what? I'm cold. <laughs> I've got just as much right to be cold as Lana Turner. <laughs> Besides, when I take the trouble to knit something, I'm not going to throw it away. <laughs> Anyway, I'm not trying to look like a glamour girl. Oh, hello, Phil. Hello, Don. Hiya, fellas. Gee, it's great to be here in the can. Hey, hey. I mean... Hiya, Phil. Hello, Dorothy. Yes, sir, fellas. It's wonderful to be right here in the can Phil, tonight. Phil, stop calling me Dorothy. Oh, it's you, Jackson. I'm sorry. That sarong had me fooled. I... Phil, this is not a sarong. I've been making sandwiches in the kitchen, and I'm wearing an apron. An apron? Then how come you got it pinned up over one hip with a rose? <laughs> Where? Oh. Oh, well, I didn't put it there. When I came here, that rose was in my lapel. Then what's it doing down on your hip? It's a rambling rose, and shut up. <laughs> anyway, we're here to entertain the boys, so let's get started. Yeah, and say, Jackson, you want to know what's happening tonight? What? Well, Alice is letting our baby daughter listen to the program for the first time. And, gee, I'd like to say a few words to her. Well, go ahead, Phil. Okay. Hello, my little bitchy tootsie bowl. <laughs> this is your great big dawadee talking. And your great 
big dowdy is going to come home soon, and then a little lampy wampy can pull your widow arms around him and give him a dwight, dwight big kiss. <laughs> oh, that. That was cute, Phil. Thanks, Jackson. Now I'd like to say something to the baby. <laughs> Phil, I thought you were talking to the baby. Listen, Jackson, if I ever talked that way to my kid, she'd hide my cornbread. <laughs> well, I wouldn't blame her. By the way, Phil, fine ad lib line, hide that cornbread. <laughs> Phil, how old, uh, how old is your kid now? Oh, she's, uh, well, uh, let me see now. Well, she was born in February 1942, and this is February 1944, so, um, well, now, let's see. There's 19, um... <laughs> It's 1942, mm -hmm. 1944. Uh -huh. You got a pencil, Jackson? <laughs> yes, Phil, but this one won't do you any good. There's no eraser on it. <laughs> anyway, here. But, Phil, the answer is very obvious. If your baby was born in February 1942, and it's now February 1944, she must be two years old. How do you know? It ain't your kid. <laughs> Wait a minute, Don. I'll make it easier for him. Look, Phil, how many candles did you put on your baby's birthday cake? Sixty-three. Did you put sixty-three candles on your kid's cake? Why not? I can afford it. <laughs> oh, yes. Alice is working. <laughs> but, Phil... Phil, I don't care whether you can afford... At least my ad lib gets something, you know. <laughs> well, I don't care. I don't care whether you can afford it or not. Your kid was born in February 1942. This is 1944. She must be two years old. All right, so she was born in 42. 42, 43, 44. She's three years old. <laughs> I fail. She's two years old. I say she's three. I don't know how old my own kid is. Oh. Answer the phone, Don. Give me that pencil, Phil. I'll show you. Hello? Yes. Yes, he's here. It's for you, Phil. Okay. Hello? What? Oh, are you sure? Okay, honey, goodbye. You're right, Jackson, the kid is two years old. Who was that, Alice? No, the kid. <laughs> well, I'm glad she straightened you out. We come to the Hollywood canteen to do a program, waste half of it by... Hello, Jack. Well, how's the show going? Oh, hello, Mary. Mary, I was trying to find you. Where were you? You're all out of breath. Your hair is mussed up. Look at your shoes. What happened? I was jitterbugging with a soldier in the middle of Vine Street. In the middle of Vine Street? Mary, if you're going to jitterbug with a soldier, you should do it right here at the canteen. Where do you think we started? <laughs> oh. Oh, you mean someone opened the door while you were dancing? What door? We just went da-da-da-da-da, and we were out in the street. <laughs> Most, most of these boys here are in such a hurry. They like to dance with a girl and see the town at the same time. Well, it wasn't so bad when there were just the two of us dancing down the street, but before I knew it, we picked up 12 more soldiers, 17 sailors, 9 Marines, and 2 civilians. Two civilians? Yeah, with that mob hanging on me, they thought I was the Sunset Bus. <laughs> Well, Mary, you certainly are having a lot of fun today, aren't you? Yeah. You know, Jack, I like to dance with service men, but the way they grip you, oh, brother. Grip you? Jack, they hold on to a girl tighter than you hang on to a dime. Mary, I don't hang on to dimes. You don't, huh? Every time you open your coin purse, a little sign comes out and says, uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh. That's the name of the manufacturer. Uh-uh-uh-uh, Smith. <laughs> and son. Anyway, Mary, forget about me and think about the boys here at the canteen. You promised to help serve sandwiches. Oh, you're right, Jack. I better go out in the kitchen and see how my maid Butterfly's doing. She's helping out, too, you know. Okay, Mary, I'll see you later. My heart tells me this is just a fling. Though you say our love means everything. Oh, Butterfly, Butterfly. Yes, Miss Levinson. <laughs> Uh, Butterfly, how are you getting along with the food? Oh, fine. But the radish should teach us agreeing with me. 
I don't mean that. Tell me, how do you like working here at the Hollywood Canteen? Oh, it's wonderful. You know, Miss Livingston, last week when I was working in the kitchen, Hetty Lamar was there, too. Hetty Lamar? Well, that was nice. Yes. And you want to know something? I think you're much prettier than she is. <laughs> now, now, Butterfly, if you were working for Miss Lamar, would you still say that I'm prettier than she is? <laughs> oh, Miss Livingston. <laughs> You see right through me, don't you? <laughs> well, flattery is nice, but you shouldn't overdo it. By the way, uh, wasn't your soldier boyfriend supposed to come here to the canteen today? Yes, ma'am. But Jerome Coleman told me he couldn't get away from camp because they liked him there and gave him a special award. A special award? Yes. KP. <laughs> but, Butterfly, that's no special award. KP means kitchen police. Oh, I thought it meant Captain's pal. <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't. How could they possibly give an award for... Oh, there's the introduction for Dennis Day's song. Let's open the door so we can hear it. Very good, very good. To Heaven, sung by Dennis Day for the first time on the air. And Dennis, you sang that beautifully. I don't think so. You don't? No, I sing and I sing, and the only one that swoons is me. <laughs> well, kid, you certainly are frank. I wish I was. <laughs> I don't mean him. Now, look, kid... After our show tonight, I want you to go home and pack because we're going up north to do some camp shows. Up north? Yep. Oh, boy, are we going as far as San Diego? <laughs> Dennis, San Diego is south of here. That was before the rain. <laughs> oh, yes, that's right. I agree with everything. Well, anyway, Dennis, be sure to pack tonight. Because we're going to leave tomorrow, and our next broadcast will come from the Army Air Base at Lemoore. Okay. Oh, say, Mr. Benny, do you mind if I take my mother with me? Your mother? I don't even want her to come down to the station. Every time I get near that woman, we wind up in an argument. Well, you don't know how to handle my mother. Why don't you do what my father did? What did he do? He killed himself. <laughs> Dennis, I met your father on Wilshire Boulevard this morning. Doesn't he look awful? Now, stop with that silly talk and tell your mother to stay home. Say, Jackson, when we go up to San Francisco, what am I going to do about the band? You know, they're working here in Hollywood. Phil, just tell them to play a little louder and we're all set. <laughs> you know, don't worry, we'll hear them. Ah, uh, Jackson, you're always complaining about my boys being too loud. They don't play loud at all. They don't, eh? No. Phil, last summer you were playing here in Los Angeles while I was in Cairo, Egypt. And when one of your boys stood up and played his flute... Three snakes stuck their heads out of a basket and spit at me. <laughs> Play loud. Oh, hello, Larry. Well, look, Cody, what are you doing at the Hollywood Canteen? Oh, I drop around here quite frequently. So do I. I generally bring my violin and play for the boys. For one thing, Jack, you know your constitutional rights. <laughs> Larry, after a crack like that, you ought to do something to redeem yourself. How about playing a number on your harmonica for the boys? Begin the begin. What do you say, <laughs> was Begin the Begin, played by Larry Adler, the world's greatest harmonica player. Oh, now, Jack. You know, Larry, I wish I could play an instrument that you could blow, like a harmonica or a clarinet or something. You shouldn't have tried it with your violin, Jack. Now, what do you mean? Well, I saw a picture of you and Larry in North Africa, and you had your violin in your mouth. Yeah? Mary, that picture was taken just as the boys were shoving it down his throat. Oh, yes, I recall that. I Say, Jack. Yes, yes, Don, with sugar and cream. Yes, yes. <laughs> and now, fellas. Oh, say, Mary. <laughs> he don't care as long as he's got sugar and cream on it. That's all. <laughs> fellas, Mary, uh, how, uh, Mary, how's the, how's the food coming along? Well, Butterfly's finished making the sandwiches. Gosh, I wonder if the lemonade is ready. Oh, Rochester. Rochester. He never hears me. Phil, give me a pair of dice, will you? Thanks. Who's doing it? Well, how much and what's the point? Rochester! 
Rochester. <laughs> he went right down on his face, folks. <laughs> Rochester, where were you when I rattled those dice? In Pomona. <laughs> Way out in Pomona. Yes, boss. I'd have been here sooner, but I came in on my knees. <laughs> well, get up off your knees. People will think you're Al Jolson. Al Jolson? After it rains, I'm still Rochester. Who's he? <laughs> Get up. You're supposed to be in the kitchen mixing some punch. Well, boss, as long as I'm here, I'd like to help entertain the boys. I rehearsed the song. Well, that's a nice gesture, Rochester, but you can't sing. Who can't sing? You just don't appreciate my soft, tender voice. Soft? <laughs> soft, tender voice? Yeah, in my part of town, they call me the sentimental fellow with the mellow bellow. <laughs> Oh, sure, sure. Really, boss, I used to sing with the whole Johnson Choir. What happened? Johnson threw me out in the hall. <laughs> and how do you expect to sing here? I've been practicing. I, I got a trained voice. Listen. Chloe. <laughs> wait a minute, wait. Do you call that a trained voice? Yes. Sounds like it was trained with a whip and a chair. <laughs> anyway, Rock, I'm not going to argue with you any longer. Now, you can't sing here. Now, wait a minute, Jack. This is the Hollywood canteen. If he wants to sing, let him sing. Oh, hello, Eddie. Oh, my God. Go ahead, Rochester, and sing. Now, wait a minute, Candor. If he sings, I won't have time to play my violin. Play your violin? Yes, I don't mind doing comedy and jokes and everything, but to me, music brings out the real Benny. Anybody who hasn't got an answer to that is stupid. <laughs> Harry, keep out of it. No kidding, Eddie. Don't you think that I have the poise of a great violinist? Well, kid? Jack, remember two weeks ago when I came to your birthday party and you played Love and Bloom? Yes. Let me tell you something, Jack. When you lifted your violin and placed it under your chin, that was true artistry. Uh-huh. And when you finished and took it from under your chin, well, Heifetz couldn't have done better. Thanks, Eddie. But, brother, that stuff in between must be a new secret weapon. <laughs> know about music. You're just jealous because I've been in show business longer than you have. How could you have been in show business longer than I have? I'm older than you. You're older than me? Are you kidding? I'm older than you. What are you talking about? I'm much older than you. I'm 39. <laughs> 39? Well, I'm... Oh, are you as old as that, <laughs> I didn't know that, kid. <laughs> well, I did exaggerate a little. <laughs> huh? I'm 37. <laughs> well, even at that, even at that, I'll have to admit I'm a year younger. Well, answer the phone, Phil. Okay. Hello? Yes? Okay, I'll tell him. Who was that, Phil? My baby. She wants you two kids to come over and play with her. <laughs> uh, well, what do you know? Shall we bring our rattles? Yeah, let's. With your bones, you won't need any. <laughs> oh, yes. Come on, Eddie. Let's go. Come on, let's... Well, fellas, we sure had a lot of fun here at the canteen, and Larry Adler, thanks a lot for joining us. You're welcome, Jack. It was swell. And Eddie, it was nice of you to drop over, too. The Grape Nuts and Grape Nuts Flakes program, coming to you from the Army Airfield at Lemoore, California, and starring Jack Benny. With Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, Rochester, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we're broadcasting from the Army Airfield at Lemoore, California. And now, folks, I don't mean to brag, but I've been a radio announcer for 15 years. And a mighty good one, too, Don. I know. <laughs> hmm. And of those 15 years, 11 have been spent in introducing Jack Benny. How proud you must be, Don. 11 long years. 572 weeks of introducing Jack Benny. Benny, nothing but Benny, Benny, Benny. John. Awake or asleep, it's Jack Benny, Jack Benny, Jack Benny. Johnsy boy. It's driving me mad. <laughs> Don. Donsy kiddo, what's come over you? <laughs> I can't stand it any longer, I tell you. I can't stand it. <laughs> 
quick, somebody hand me a wet towel. <laughs> Don! 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 Where, where, where am I? Uh, where, what happened? Don, we're at the Army Airfield at Lemoore, California, and you were introducing me. Oh, oh, yes, yes, I remember. As I was saying, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to introduce America's best-loved personality, a man who is everybody's friend, Jack Benny. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is Jack Benny talking, and Don, I was surprised, really amazed at the way you broke down during my introduction. After all, you've been with me for 11 years. I couldn't help it, Jack. It was just something that's been pent up inside of me, and I've been fighting against it. Oh. Well, how long has this been bothering you? Eleven years. <laughs> Eleven years? Why, Don, I remember the day you came, to, you came to me and auditioned for the job. You were so eager and enthusiastic. Well, for heaven's sakes, that was 11 years ago. When's the audition over? <laughs> what? When are you going to hire me? <laughs> Don, are you trying to force me into making a snap judgment? <laughs> After all, I've got to think it over. That's only fair, you know. Well, I'm giving you my ultimatum, Jack. Either you'll have to start paying me right now or I'm walking off the show. Well, uh... I'm waiting for your answer. Don, don't rush me. My goodness. After all, I can't say... Hello, Jack. Oh, hello, Mary. You're just in time. <laughs> Well, am I glad to see you. Oh, Jack, what were you and Don talking about? It's not important, Mary. Well, how do you like being out here at the Lemoore Airfield, Mary? Oh, it's all right, but as I was walking over here from the PX, one of the cadets grabbed my hat as a souvenir. Well, why didn't you grab it back? I couldn't. He was in a BT-15. <laughs> oh, Mary, they, uh, they don't fly that low. They don't, huh? All I know is when they have a date with a girl, they pick their flowers on the way. Really? How do you know so much about these boys? Well, when we got here this morning, one of the cadets told me he'd show me how to fly an airplane. So we went up for two hours. Uh, did you learn anything? No, I knew how to kiss that way before I went up. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Mary. The cadet didn't take you up without an instructor, did he? That guy didn't need one. <laughs> Oh. Well, what do you say, Jack? I'm waiting for your answer. I'll be with you in a minute, Don. Uh, tell me, Mary. <clears throat> Mary, are you as popular here at Lemoor as you were at the other camps we visited? Well, I don't know, but that handsome cadet who took me up in the airplane went for me in a big way. Really? Yeah. He wants to impress me and show me how sophisticated he is. Uh-huh. So tonight he's going to take me to the El Patio. <laughs> Uh, El, uh, El Patio? Yeah, that's Spanish for lift your feet a little higher. You're stepping on my face. <laughs> oh, is it, is it, uh, oh, fella, you should see this gang. Is, is it, is it, is the El Patio crowded? Huh? Crowded? Yeah. A private walked in there one night and came out wearing a second lieutenant for a hat. <laughs> well, what do you know? What do you know, a brass hat? Well, that's very good. That's good. Jack? Jack, I'm still waiting for an answer. Don, don't be such an eager beaver. What's the matter? <laughs> it's a fat one, too. <laughs> Don, can't you... Don, can't you see I'm talking to Mary? But you've already talked to Mary. Now, I want a decision or else. Jack, tell me, what's this all about? Mary, it's nothing. Well, I don't know. Every time you say it's nothing, somebody sues you for it. <laughs> well... Now, tell me, what does Don want? Well... Go ahead, tell her. Well... Hello, Mr. Benny. Dennis, how are you, kid? Well, well, if it isn't Dennis Day. If it isn't, his underwear fits me perfectly. <laughs> no, uh, uh, no, no, Dennis. When I say if it isn't Dennis Day, it's just a figure of speech. It's like a sight for sore eyes. My underwear? <laughs> no, no, forget it, kid. Well, anyway, Dennis, I'm glad you're here. I really am. Thanks. Yes, sir, I'm sure glad to see you. You know, kid, I've always had your interest at heart. Gee, Mr. Benny, do you really mean that? Of course I do. And my mother said you were a louse. <laughs> your, uh, your mother certainly doesn't like me, does she, Dennis? No, every time I mention your name, she calls you a louse. Well, then why do you keep mentioning my name? She tricks me into it. <laughs> Oh. 
Anyway, Mr. Benny, I don't care what my mother says. I like you. Well, thanks. Thanks, Dennis. And now, fellas... You've always been okay with me. Well, thanks, kid. Thanks, thanks. And now, fellas, before You know, Mr. Benny, sometimes I wish you were my father. You do? Well, that's nice. And now, fellas... So does my father. (laughs) Well, I don't, uh... I don't blame him, kid. Say, Dennis, when your mother and father have those arguments, whose side are you on? I don't know. They keep shoving me back and forth. (laughs) Oh, well, you must have quite... Jack! I'm waiting. Uh, what did you say, Mary? I didn't say anything. That was Don. Oh, yes, yes, Don. Say, Dennis, it's about time for your song. What are you going to sing for the boys? This is a lovely way to spend an evening. Good. Well, go right ahead. Jack, I've waited as long Don, as I... Don, Dennis is going to sing. Please don't interrupt him. Go ahead, kid. Take your time, Dennis. Take your time. That was... <laughs> that was... This is a lovely way to spend an evening dedicated to the El Patio and sung by Dennis Day. And very good, Dennis, very good. There's nothing better than listening to your voice. And now, fellas... What else can you do with it? I wouldn't know. And now, boys... Hey, Mr. Benny. What? Did you hear Fred Allen's program last week? No, no. I never listen to Allen. Every time he's on the air, I put my radio out in the garden to get rid of the Japanese beetles. (laughs) Gosh, does Mr. Allen's program kill the Japanese beetles? No, but after ten minutes of listening to it... They tap on my window, I hand them a knife, and they commit Harry Carey. <laughs> you know, Alan's a sort of a coast-to-coast flip gun, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Jack, I heard his show last week, and you know what Alan called you? I don't care. He said you were the Surrey with no fringe on top. <laughs> well, now, isn't that clever? The Surrey with no fringe on top. Oh, hubba, hubba, hubba. <laughs> isn't that <laughs> Ah, uh, Jack, you're just sore because Fred Allen is funnier than you are. Listen, Mary, I played in vaudeville with that guy, and I know just how funny Allen is. He'd start off his act by laying an egg, and for an encore, he'd hatch it. <laughs> so don't tell me about Allen. All right, Jack. Why, when he played a theater, it was so empty, the balcony came down and sat in the orchestra. <laughs> so don't tell me about Allen. All right, Jack. And what right. a ham he is for applause. In one theater, a mouse trap happened to snap shut, and he took four bows. <laughs> Don't tell me about Alan. Alan. I know, I know. 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 You said it. (laughs) And now, fellas. And now. (laughs) The Surrey with no fringe on top. Oh, boy, that's terrific. (laughs) Oh, that's my idea of comedy. (laughs) How do you like an ungrateful guy like that? Oh, well. Hiya, Jackson. What's all the excitement about? Oh, hello, Phil. Hello. Hello. Say, Jackson, uh, what's the Wilson laughing about? Who knows? Go ahead, Don. Tell Phil a joke. Okay, get this, Phil. Last week, Fred Allen... <laughs> Don, Don, hold your... Don, hold your stomach still. You're air conditioning the theater. <laughs> Please. Well, come on, Don. Lay it on me. Let me hear it. Well, Fred Allen called Jack the Surrey with no fringe on top <laughs> What's a Surrey? <laughs> there you are. It's uh, it's supposed to be a gag, Phil. A gag? Why, my baby can think of better jokes than that, and she's only, only, uh... Two. Two years old. <laughs> remember, I figured out her age for you last week, remember? Oh, yeah. And you know something, Jackson? Alice knew it all the time. Really? Yeah. Well, well, hubba, hubba, hubba. Well, Phil, it's a shame. <laughs> you know, Phil, it's really a shame. You know, you're... You're such an intelligent-looking fellow. It's too bad you didn't have better schooling. Well, it ain't my fault, Jackson. You see, my folks wanted me to be a great musician. A great musician. Uh, Phil, it took you five years to learn how to put a nickel in a jukebox. <laughs> well, Jack, I've never seen you put a nickel in a jukebox. Maybe ju- not, but I know how. <laughs> anyway, look who calls himself a great musician. Oh, what are you talking about? I'm getting along all right. I'm doing as well as Harry James. You're doing as well as Harry James. Certainly. Alice is just as pretty as Betty Grable. <laughs> oh, well... Uh, well, looking at it from those angles, from that angle, <laughs> I, uh... <laughs> I, uh, I must, I must agree with you. Oh, by the way, Phil, 
Uh, Phil, you say you're a great musician. Just what instrument of any do you play? Are you angling? I mean, are you kidding? Huh? I've played drums for 12 years. Oh. Say, Phil, if you played drums for 12 years, how come you became an orchestra leader? I lost one of the sticks. <laughs> well, I'll... I'll give you the address of Uncle Dan's flop house in case you lose the other one, you know? <laughs> Anyway, Phil, I'm a better musician than you are. At least I'm not afraid to play my instrument. No wonder. You've got the only violin in the world with a built-in foxhole. <laughs> built-in foxhole. Built-in foxhole. <laughs> when Jack plays, the fox comes out and takes up a collection. Mary, I had to let the fox go. He wanted a 10% cut. I can go along with a gag. Say, I'm kind of foxy myself. You're too old to be woofy. <laughs> Dennis. Don't be mad. I don't know what it means. Well, if you don't know what you're talking about, be quiet. Now, Phil, as long as you've got one stick left, how about shaking it at your sad sack musicians and see if a, see if a band number comes out. Okay. Wait a minute, Phil. I'll take the phone. Hello? Oh, how are you? Yes, I'm broadcasting from the Lemoore Airfield today for the soldiers. What? You'd like to entertain at a camp, too? Oh, sure. You needn't be afraid. Soldiers are wonderful audiences. Of course they'll laugh at you. Sure, sure. Now, you go right up there and don't be nervous. You're welcome. So long. Who is that? Bob Hope. <laughs> go ahead. That was Guess One More Time sung and played by Phil Harris and his Makes You Want to Go to Hanford Orchestra. <laughs> now, kids, before we go any further, in fact... I meant to tell you about this at lunch. I had the funniest dream last night. It was so realistic, and all of you kids were in it. We were in your dream? Yes, it was the strangest thing. You see, I dreamt I was an air cadet here at Lemoore. And Mary... Yes? You were my girlfriend. And Phil... Yeah? You were my flight instructor. And Don... Yes? You were my pal. And Hetty... Oops, wrong dream. <laughs> anyway... <laughs> now, as I was saying... I'll get it. I hope it's a sponsor. Quiet. Hello? Hello, oh, Mr. Barry, this is Rochester. <laughs> Rochester, you were supposed to be here two hours ago. Where are you? Stuck on the road. I'm out of gas. Out of gas? Are you sure? Yes, sir. I just looked at the gauge. Oh. Well, where does, where does the needle point? To the nearest gas station. <laughs> Well, well, get some gas and pick me up after the broadcast. I got bad news on that, too, boss. I left in such a hurry this morning, I grabbed the wrong ration book. The wrong ration book? Well, there must be some way you can get the car out here. Not unless it'll run on hamburger. <laughs> Never mind that and get started right away. I want you to be here when the program's over. Well, you better sit down, honey. This is going to take longer than I thought. <laughs> Rochester, who are you talking to? A lady who's having car trouble, too. Oh, sure. Sure, I suppose she also ran out of gas. Uh-huh. And at the same time. Uh-huh. I suppose she even ran out of gas in the same place. Uh, in fact, in the same car. <laughs> That's what I thought. Rochester, you know you shouldn't be driving around with girls when you're supposed to be working. It was purely accidental, boss. I was getting into the car. Yes. When I noticed in the car parked behind me the most beautiful girl I ever saw. She was a humdinger from Carl Linger. Well, so I immediately organized the carpool. <laughs> well, I'll be... Rochester, you fall for every girl you see. But this one's different. She's gorgeous. Oh, stop exaggerating. No, really, boss. It's just like looking through Esquire with smoke glasses. <laughs> Stop that and get here right away. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, Rochester, where are you calling from? I just stopped in a place here to have a Thomas J. Collinsworth. A Thomas J. Collinsworth? What's that? A long Tom Collins. Well, get out of there and be quick about it. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> what are you laughing at? A Surrey with no fringe on top. <laughs> Darn that, Rochester. I can't see how he ran out of gas. Play, Phil. He couldn't have used it for a chaser. I don't know. 
I want to thank Colonel Mon, uh, Captain Blair, Captain Laughlin, and all the men here at the Lemoore Airfield for their wonderful hospitality. Good night, everybody. The Grape Nuts and Grape Nuts Flakes program, coming to you from the Naval Air Station at Livermore near San Francisco, California, and starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, Rochester, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen... Let me take you behind the scenes of radio and show you how an announcer introduces a comedian to get the program off to a good start. Uh, go right ahead, Don. You see, folks, we announcers depend upon holidays and special events to give meaning to our introductions. That's right, folks. Every introduction has a meaning all its own. For instance, last Thanksgiving, when I introduced Jack, I said, Since this is a new Thanksgiving, we bring you an old turkey. <laughs> Uh, that's, uh, that's why Roosevelt went back to one Thanksgiving. He didn't want to hear that joke twice. <laughs> uh, continue, Don. When the Christmas holidays rolled around, I introduced Jack by saying, We can't bring you Santa Claus, but we bring you a man who's holding the bag. Now, uh, now that joke never had a chance. It was given its primary training by Red Skelton, grounded by Abbott and Costello, and washed out by Fred Allen. <laughs> All right, Don, proceed with your lecture on introductions. When I introduced Jack on Washington's birthday, I said, George Washington threw a dollar across the Potomac. We can't bring you that dollar, but we bring you the man who has all the others. (laughs) I'll, uh, I'll never forget the reaction to that gag. The audience rose to their feet, bowed their heads for one minute, and sat down again. (laughs) Continue, Don. So you see, ladies and gentlemen, the various holidays have much to do with introducing a radio comedian. But this is not a holiday. That's right. So for absolutely no reason at all, I bring you Jack Benny. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking. And Don, I agree that today isn't exactly a holiday, but there is a reason for introducing me to these sailors here at Livermore. There is? Why, certainly. I used to be a sailor myself. Uh, back in 1917. Oh, uh, did they take men over 38 then? <laughs> Don, how could I be 38 then when I'm only 32 now? I mean, don't uh, don't let this gray hair fool you. It isn't mine. <laughs> <laughs> so there. But Jack, 1917 was 27 years ago. And if you're 32 now, that means you entered the Navy when you were only five years old. I was a daring little devil, wasn't I? <laughs> you know, I, I still have the tattoo of Shirley Temple on my arm. I really have. Anyway, let's get on with but the... But, Jack, uh, you were so young. What could the Navy do with you? They made me an ensign. <laughs> That's what. An ensign at five? They thought I was seven and shut up. <laughs> This this gray hair fooled them, too, you know. And, Don, I wish you wouldn't make me lose my temper while we're here. I'm sentimental about the Navy. Oh, me too, Jack. You know, I wish I were a sailor. I feel that I could put my heart into that uniform. Don. (laughs) Don, you'll never... Oh, your heart. Your heart. (laughs) Anyway, we, uh, we better get started with the... Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? You may not remember me, but I'm Mr. London, the manager of the St. Francis Hotel. Oh, yes. I've been staying there all week. Well, congratulations. we got a room for you now. <laughs> well, I'm... <laughs> I'm glad. It was a little noisy sleeping in the lobby there, you know? In the lobby? Why, Jack, wasn't it embarrassing getting undressed? Oh, no, Don, no. They have two lobbies, one for men and one for women. <laughs> Now, what a scramble getting dressed in the morning. Yesterday, I came out of there wearing a commander's pants, an admiral's coat, and a sailor's hat. I almost went crazy saluting myself. But, Don, no kidding, we have had a very exciting week up here, haven't we? Oh, we certainly have. Especially last Monday night at the Henry Kaiser Shipyards when Mary launched that ship. We had a great time. Well, I was enjoying it until the foreman at the shipyard insulted me. Don, the foreman apologized. He told you he was nearsighted. He didn't try to launch you intentionally. (laughs) 
was just a natural mistake, that's all. Hello, Jack. Oh, hello, Mary. How... What's going on, boys? Oh, we were just talking about you launching that ship Monday night. Oh, that certainly was a thrill. I'll never forget it as long as I live. And gosh, Mary, the way you socked the boat with that bottle. What a swing. No kidding, Mary. You were terrific, really. The girl who launched that other ship didn't have half the swing you had. She's never been out with a sailor. (laughs) Oh, oh, I guess it's... I guess the proudest moment of my life came when I launched the boat and said, I christen thee the Edward E. Hale. But, gee, Mary, I asked you to try... John, I told you a thousand times they wouldn't let me call it the SS Great Nut. (laughs) Oh, fine. Don probably wants you to launch it with sugar and cream, you know? But then on second thought, why should he? Grape nuts are for breakfast, not for launch. (laughs) (laughs) My. Did that come out of me? Huh? What happened then? What happened? Oh. <laughs> oh, brother, those are the kind of jokes that keep us moving from camp to camp. <laughs> yeah, but you know, Mary, I can't get over how many boats they've launched here in such a short time and the amount of champagne they have to use. Imagine all that champagne falling into the water. Then that explains it. What? Uh, yesterday, I saw a man fishing, and as he pulled one out of the water, the fish shrugged his fins and said, In my condition, who cares? <laughs> Mary, it's all right to be silly and don't over, but don't overdo it. You know, fish can't talk. Well, this one was so cockeyed, he didn't know what he was doing. <laughs> well, that's different. But all in all, it has been an exciting week from the moment we crossed the bay and arrived in San Francisco. Say, Jack, did you notice those huge Navy planes landing on the water? Yes, and I was puzzled by those big things at the bottom where the wheels should be. Uh, what are they? Those are pontoons. Yes, you've Pon- seen them before, haven't Pontoon? you? Pontoons? Yeah. Oh, yeah, those are the things the automobiles use in Los Angeles during the rainy season. <laughs> Well, look who's here. Alice Faye's pinup boy. Hiya, Jackson. Hello, fellas. <laughs> well, Phil, it's good to see you. What have you been doing all week? Just fishing and wringing them out. <laughs> what? It's the first time I ever had champagne with bones in it. <laughs> oh. Say, Jackson, you want to know who's stationed at this base? I just saw him on the outside. No, who? Robert Taylor. Robert Taylor? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know he... Mary, come back here. (laughs) No kidding. Phil, I didn't know Robert Taylor was stationed here. Sure, he's a lieutenant. He's a flight instructor. Well, what do you know? Now, I bet he looks handsome in his uniform, huh? Oh, I don't know. I've seen him. When you stop to think about it, he's not so handsome. Well, maybe not. I don't know. When you stop to think about it, he's not so cute either. Well, you'd know more about that than I would. I don't know. And when you stop to think about it, he's just another man, that's all. Well. You know, Jack, I think they're crazy. Who? The girls who stop to think about it. <laughs> I should have known you were leading up to something. <laughs> Bill, for heaven's sake, play a band number and get Mary out of this romantic mood. Okay. I was handsome, too, when I was a sailor. Well, <laughs> uh, that, uh... That was Spain, played by Phil Harris and his orchestra. And Phil, I want to tell you something. You've been with me about nine years. The first time I really enjoyed your boys. You well, know? thanks, Jackson, but these ain't my boys. You know, I left my regular orchestra in Los Angeles. Oh. Oh, well, I should have known this wasn't your regular orchestra. These fellows are wearing shoes, you know? <laughs> now, that don't mean nothing. When my boys play, they have a reason for not wearing shoes. They have? Sure. When they come to an eight-bar rest, they got to have something to count on, don't they? <laughs> Well, now I've heard everything, you know? Oh, Jack, you're always picking off Phil's orchestra. They must be pretty good. After all, they're working for Slapsy Maxi. I know. What do you think made Maxi Slapsy? <laughs> <laughs> and now, fellas... All right, Jackson, all right. So my band ain't so good. What do you want me to do, fire the boys? Well, it wouldn't be a bad idea, Phil. I mean, give them two weeks' notice. Only two weeks' notice to fire them? Sure. What are you talking about? i got to give them eight months' notice to learn a new song. <laughs> Well, then start now. I want him to know Jingle Bells by Christmas. <laughs> Listen, Jack. What? Phil may be too modest to brag about his orchestra, but he had an offer to play in one of the most exclusive places around here. Really? Where? The Rodeo Club. <laughs> hey, that's a... 
That's a funny name for a night spot. I wonder why they I wonder why they call it the Rodeo Club. Because after you take one drink, they throw you, hog tie you, and brand you to show that you've been waited on. <laughs> well, gee, they must really be doing business. And now, fellas, come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? You may not remember me, but I'm Mr. London, the manager of the St. Francis Hotel. Yes, yes, I know. We have your room ready, but due to the shortage of help, you'll have to make your own bed. Oh, oh, I don't mind making my own bed. Good. Here's a hammer and saw. Get busy. <laughs> well, uh, anything to help, you know, I... And now, fellas, as a special tribute to the Livermore Air Base... Tonight, we're going to... Uh... Hello, Mr. Benny. Hello, Dennis. Uh, as I was saying, fellas, tonight we're going to... How are you? Fine, kid. Fine, fine. <laughs> as a special tribute to the Livermore Air Base... Gee whiz, Mr. Benny, you haven't seen me all week and you don't even say, Hiya, Dennis, old kid, old pal. Gee, I'm glad to see you. What have you been doing? Okay. Hiya, Dennis, old kid, old pal. Gee, I'm glad to see you. What have you been doing? Nothing. <laughs> Just as I thought. Uh, tonight, fellas, we're going to try Except and... last Tuesday. What? Last Tuesday night, I had a date with a beautiful blonde. <whistles> Dennis. And oh boy, did I paint the town red. The Bow Tavern, the Gay 90s, the Top of the Mark, and the 1079 Club. <laughs> Kid, you, uh... You, uh... <laughs> Dennis, you really were stepping. Did your, um... Did your girl have a good time, too? I don't know. She didn't show up. <laughs> well, of all the things... Uh, Dennis, there's no fun going to all those places by yourself. There isn't? Of course not. <laughs> And another thing, kid, how can you afford to go to those expensive nightclubs? I don't check my hat. <laughs> well, how can you save money that way? Jack, this may come as a surprise to you, but when people get their hats back from the check room, they're supposed to leave the girl a tip. Oh. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Say, you know, girls are lucky. They don't have to check their hats. Huh? Mm, of course not. Well, anyway, Dennis, getting back to... Say... I wonder... Stop thinking about it. You'd look silly wearing a lady's hat. <laughs> I wasn't thinking about it at all. I was just thinking how silly it was for Dennis to go to all those nightclubs without his girl. Well, gee, Mr. Benny, I was having so much fun, I didn't even realize she wasn't there. Well, when did you miss her? When I went to kiss her goodnight. <laughs> Well, at least it didn't spoil your evening. I'm glad you got around, kid. Yeah, I went to one place yesterday afternoon where they threw me, hogtied me, and branded me. Oh, the uh, Rodeo Club. No, the Income Tax Bureau. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. March the 15th does roll around. Well, anyway, now that you're here, kid, how about singing a song for the boys, huh? Okay. Okay. Well, okay. That was pretty... Pretty Kitty Blue Eyes, sung by Dennis Day for the first time on the air. Dennis, that was beautiful. Thank you. Say, Mr. Benny, I wanted to talk to you about something. You know, when I was at the Income Tax Bureau, I got all mixed up. You did? Why? Well, my salary is $35, isn't it? That's right. And because my song only takes two minutes, you told me it amounts to $186,000 a week. That's right, Ken. Then what do I pay tax on? $35 or $186,000? <laughs> uh, Dennis, $186,000 is a theoretical figure. You're not really getting that much. I'm not? No. No wonder my girl didn't show up. Dennis, let me try to... Wait a minute, Jackson. Wait a minute. You better let me handle this. I'll explain this whole thing to the kids. Oh, fine, fine. Now, look, Dennis, theoretically, Jackson is right. What? Now, uh, the $186,000 is your uh, uh, hypothetical compensation. Uh-huh. Uh, which means that your remuneration is based on the limited time of your prod... prod, prod uh, uh, just skip that. Prod... Uh, uh-huh. Prod- productivity. Oh. Now, the element is the question to segregate, segregate, seg- uh, 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 segregate, segregate the actual from the supposition. Oh, uh-huh. brother. Now, uh, so summing it all up and then condensing it to simple uh, phraseology. Yes? You're a bum. <laughs> Phil. 
alphabetical renumeration, phraseology. Phil, for heaven's sake, where did you learn all those big words? Oh, I was up with them all night. And Jackson, the next time you give me a speech like that to read, I'm going to punch you right in the nose. <laughs> Well, just once I wanted people to know that you can pronounce words even though you don't know what you're talking about. You know? Oh, you and your educated writers, you. Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? You may not remember me, but I'm Mr. London, the manager of the St. Francis I know, Hotel. I know, I know. You lucky man, I now have a room for you completely furnished. Oh, fine, fine, thank you, that's well. I'm glad. Uh, tell me, do I have a tub? Yes, but if you button your coat, nobody will notice it. <laughs> That I can't understand at all. Oh, my goodness, I forgot to ask him something. I'll get him back. Oh, Mr. London! Mr. London! Here he comes, Jack. Mr. Benny wants to talk to you. Mr. Benny? Yes? You may not remember me, but I'm Mr. Never London. Never mind that! <laughs> now, here's what I'd like to know, Mr. London. Do you serve breakfast in the rooms? Why, yes, certainly. You can have anything you want. Good. Now, tomorrow morning for breakfast, I want grape nuts flakes. Why? Ooh, what he said. <laughs> Why? I'll tell you why. Because... They're moldy rich, sweet as a nut, and have whole grain nourishment. That's why. That's telling them, Jack. And furthermore... They're a thrifty buy in the big 12-ounce economy size package, and they're not rations. Either. <laughs> That's telling them, Jack. And another thing. I met a sailor friend of mine here, and he told me that he likes to start his day with a big bowl of grape nuts flakes. Because... Because his motto is... Eat a good breakfast, be a better gob. <laughs> yes, sir. And do you realize that grape nuts flakes are an American favorite? Why? Why? Are you crazy? No, I'm London, manager of the St. Francis Hall. I know. I know. <laughs> Peculiar fellow, but likable. Now, where were we before he came in? I was a bum. Oh, yes, yes. No, 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 Dennis, you're not a bum. And let's not start that again. <laughs> let's get on with the... I'll take it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny, this is Rochester. Rochester, what's the idea of calling me long distance from Beverly Hill? I'm making out my income tax and I'm stuck. Well, what's what's sticking you? The first line. <laughs> the one that says gross income. What's that? Well, that means your entire income. <laughs> For example, Rochester, I pay you two thousand a year. That means your gross income is two thousand dollars. Two thousand dollars? Yes. Boss, is that theoretical, hypothetical, or did the operator give me the wrong number? <laughs> Don't worry, you haven't got the wrong number. Now, look, Rochester, in figuring your income tax, put down all you made, then list your deductions, such as contributions, donations, bad investments. Bad investments? Does that include money lost while on bended knee? <laughs> no, no, it doesn't. It has nothing to do with shooting crafts. Anyway, I thought you told me Lady Luck always smiles at you. She does, but yesterday she forgot to use Ethereum. <laughs> Well, it serves you right for playing with strangers. This wasn't a stranger, boss. You know my friend Sam? Yes. Well, he's got the only paradise you can locate with radar. <laughs> you mean, you mean they're trick dice? Trick? When you roll them out, one comes up seven, the other eleven, so there's nothing to be in doubt about. <laughs> Well, this certainly ought to teach you a lesson. Uh-huh. Yesterday's show was a bad day for us. Us? Yeah, that green sport coat of yours fits Sam perfectly. Uh, Rochester, you mean to say you lost my sport coat in a crap game? I couldn't help it, boss. You couldn't help it? You had the nerve to gamble with my coat? I was trying to win back your tuxedo. <laughs> See, Rochester, you better have my clothes back by the time I come home. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, say, boss. Now what? Uh, if you go to another launch in, will you do me a favor? Sure. What is it? Bring me back two cases of fish. Two cases of fish? Yeah, yeah. And when you pull out the hooks, uh, uh, clog up the holes. I don't want to lose any of it. 
Okay, I will. Goodbye. Goodbye. Sorry, every time I go away, something happens. I want to thank Captain Champion, Commander Walker, Lieutenant Tyser, and all the men here at the Livermore Naval Air Station for another swell day. Thank you, and good night. The Grape Nuts and Grape Nuts Flakes program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's turn back the clock. It's Saturday evening, and we take you to Jack Benny's home in Beverly Hills. Mr. Benny's residence. Star of stage, screen, radio, television, and violin recitals at ridiculously low prices. <laughs> Hello? Is Mr. Benny in? Do you want to complain about his camel? Well, no, I don't. Is Mr. Benny in? How much does he owe you? He doesn't owe me a cent. I'd like to speak to Mr. Benny. How much do you want to borrow? I don't want to borrow anything. Well, congratulations. You have met the necessary requirements. <laughs> you are 1A on Mr. Benny's receiving list. Oh, boss. Boss. Coming, Rochester. Mr. Benny, you want it on the phone. Oh. Who is it? I don't know, but it's safe. <laughs> Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. This is Walter Wanger of the Academy Award Committee. Oh, 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 Mr. Wanger. Yes, yes. Are you calling on official business for the committee? Well, yes, I am, Mr. Benny. And I want you to know that we did exactly as you requested. You, uh, you did? Yes, we counted and recounted those ballots 20 times. <laughs> and Paul Lucas is still the winner. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Rochester, there's nothing to laugh at. All right, I was wrong about Winning the award is a serious business. In totaling the ballots, the results can change up to the last minute. That's too complicated. Complicated? Yeah, in my business, all you got to do is roll them out, count them up, and that's it. <laughs> well, I'm not interested in your business. Besides, I'm taking Miss Livingston to a movie, so get out my razor and give me a shave. Oh, boss, why don't you shave yourself? After all, yesterday I gave you a haircut. What are you talking about? I wasn't even home yesterday. What's that got to do with your hair? <laughs> well, that's the silliest thing I ever heard of. The hair on a toupee doesn't grow. The one you bought doesn't. I'm talking about the one you trapped yourself. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, I did trap a couple of them. And you better stop wearing the one with the white stripe down the middle or you'll lose all your friends. <laughs> Rochester, stop being silly and give me a shave. Okay, but boss, do me a favor this time and break the monotony. What do you mean? When I cut you, for heaven's sake, bleed! <laughs> okay, okay, start shaving. When you cut me, nudge me, and I'll force myself. <laughs> Miss Livingston may get here a little early, so hurry up. I want to be ready when she arrives. <laughs> Oh, Butterfly, Butterfly. Yes, Miss Livingston? Butterfly, I can't find my lipstick. Have you seen it? No, ma'am. Uh, how about my mascara? I haven't seen that either. Oh, well, that's funny. Have you seen my false eyelashes? No, ma'am. My goodness, I can't even find my false fingernails. <laughs> Butterfly, what are you laughing at? You set me all lost, aren't you? <laughs> Butterfly, a lot of girls wear false eyelashes and things to make them look prettier. But, Miss Livingston, you don't need any of those things. I think you're very pretty. Oh, Butterfly, you're just saying that. Oh, no, Miss Livingston. And another thing, I heard that Dorothy Lamour wishes she had something that you have. Really? What is it? Me. Help is hard to get, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you're right. Now, Butterfly, help me button up my dress. I've got to hurry over to meet Mr. Benny. He's taking me to a movie. He is? Yes, that's why I'm going to his house. Mr. Benny's taking me to the Cameo Theater, and it's in that neighborhood. Gee, the Cameo Theater? 
Yes, Butterfly. Have you been there? Not since they raised the price to 15 cents. <laughs> 15 cents? Oh, they had to do that when they took out the benches and put in the folding chairs. <laughs> Fifteen cents, he would. I'm going to call up Mr. Benny and tell him... Uh, come in. Oh, Miss Livingston, after all, you have a maid. Oh, I'm sorry, Butterfly. You answer the door. Yes, ma'am. Come in. <laughs> oh, fine. Butterfly, please go to the door. Yes, ma'am. Massy dosey 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 and little lambsy divey. A kimby divey too, and you all. La 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 well, hello, Barbara. Gee, I'm glad to see you. How's Bob? He's fine. I just heard from him that... Say, Mary, am I intruding? You look like you're going out. Oh, if you want to call it that. Jack's taking me to a movie, and I just found out it's a 15-cent one. I'll bet it's the Cameo Theater. It is the Cameo Theater. Has Bob ever taken you there? Not since they took out the benches and put in the folding chairs. <laughs> Oh, for heaven's sake, I didn't know Bob was cheap, too. Well, he wasn't always, Mary, but he started running around with Jack, and he got some of it on him. <laughs> hmm, leave it to Benny. No kidding, Mary. Is Jack really that type? Barbara, all I know is in Scotland, when two Scotsmen meet, one says to the other, Say, McGregor, did you hear the new one about Jack Benny? <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to call Jack and tell him he can save his 30 cents because I'm not going to a movie... Say, wait a minute. What are you doing tonight, Barbara? Nothing. Good. Then you come to the movies, too, and we'll make Jack buy tickets for the three of us. Would you like to come? Oh, I'd love it. It'll probably be a cowboy picture, and I'll be able to whoop it up. Whoop it up? Yeah. I haven't whistled at anything since I got married. <laughs> All right, let's go. Oh, boy, will Jack be sore. Well, I'm through shaving you, boss. Gosh, Rochester, what a rough shave you gave me. See, my face feels awful. Did you cut me? I ain't saying, but if I held your nose and mouth, you could still breathe. <laughs> It's the last time you're going to shave me. It almost was. <laughs> you can say that again. Well, that must be Mary now. Come in. Oh. Hello, Dennis. Hello, Mr. Benny. What are you doing here, kid? I had to see you because I'm still having trouble about my income tax. Dennis, I've explained it to you a dozen times. What did you tell him at the income tax office? I told him what you told me, that I make $186,000 a week. <laughs> You told him that? Yeah, the tax man figured for three hours, and then he said I owed six and a half million dollars. Six and a half million dollars? Was I embarrassed? I didn't have that much with me. <laughs> Dennis, I've told you over and over again, $186,000 is your theoretical salary. You actually get $35 a week. Oh. Oh, what? I'll probably get a refund. I gave him a check for six and a half million dollars. <laughs> well, don't worry. You'll get the whole thing back. Anyway, Dennis, you shouldn't be talking. Excuse me, kid. Well, I'm here, Jack. Good. Now we can go to... Well, hello, Barbara. Hello, Jack. How are you? Fine. Come on in. Hello, Dennis. Hello, Miss Livingston. Uh, Barbara, I want you to meet Dennis Day. Dennis, this is Barbara Stanwyck. Barbara Stanwyck? Gee. Hello, little man. Little man? She should know what a wolf I am. <laughs> Dennis, stop with that silly talk. 
Well, I want Miss Samick to have respect for me. Oh. I do respect you, Dennis, and I think you're very sweet, too. You do? Of course I do. Would you ask me for a date if you were sure I'd accept? <laughs> well, I, I wouldn't say that. You see, the man I like to go out with is, well, my husband, Robert Taylor. But he's married. I certainly hope so. <laughs> Jack, let's get started. It's time we went to the movies. You know, Mary, as long as Barbara dropped in, it isn't polite for us to go to the movies and leave her here. I mean, especially... Especially since... They took out the benches and put in the folding chairs. I didn't mean that. Anyway, I've got two passes. Uh, say... Say, kids, I've got an idea. Why don't we stay home and play gin rummy? I don't want to play gin rummy. But Barbara wouldn't enjoy the picture. It's a Western. Oh, I love a good Western. But it's not a good Western, Barbara. You see, it was made since the beef shortage and the cattle thieves had to rustle gophers. (laughs) It's no good. Well, if you don't want to go, we'll go by ourselves. Come on, Barbara. All right. Hey, kids, would you like to have my passes? No, Jack. We can make a better deal at the box office. (laughs) Okay. Now, look, Dennis. Just a minute. Oh, Miss Stanwyck. Yes? (laughs) Dennis, come back here. I wish you wouldn't act so silly. What did I do that was so silly? Trying to date a Barbara Stanwyck at your age. It'd be sillier at your age. What? What did you say? Miss Stanwyck would have fallen in love with me if it hadn't been for you. Me? What did I have to do with it? You don't pay me $186,000 a week. Well, that's the craziest thing I... Why would Miss Stanwyck fall in love with a kid like you? I could tell by the way she looked at me. You could tell what? That if you and Miss Livingston hadn't been here, she couldn't have controlled herself. (laughs) Dennis! Dennis, what's happened to you? I don't know, but it feels good. (laughs) I've had enough trouble. Listen, I've had just about enough out of you. You come over to my house, eat my fruit. What? I've been watching you. (laughs) Now, you go on home, and when you feel like apologizing for the way you acted, you can come back. Okay, and goodbye. Goodbye. And get your hand out of that fruit bowl. (laughs) Now, go home and think it over. I'll show him. Such a wise guy. He pays me $35 a week, treats me like a kid, and expects me to sing good. I'll get even with him. Next Sunday, I'll sing lousy. That's what I'll do. You're darn right. I'll sing like this. Say, that wasn't so bad. But I'll sing lousy on the program, even if I have to practice to do it. I'll show Mr. Benny. Oh, darn it, I passed my house. (laughs) I always do that. I I always do that, too. (laughs) Oh, well. Oh, Mother! Mother! Your mother isn't here, son. Who are you? Your father. (laughs) Oh. Hello, Pop. Hello, son. Well, where have you been? I just came from Mr. Benny's house. Well, take a bath and no one will notice it. (laughs) Okay. Say, where's Mother? She went to work. Oh. Who are you betting on? Strangler Lewis. Oh. Say, Pop, I just had a big fight with Mr. Benny about Barbara Stanwyck. Who? Barbara Stanwyck. Gee, Pop, is she beautiful. She's got eyes like stars, lips like rubies, a figure like Venus de Milo on... Son, stop talking like that in front of your mother's picture. (laughs) Gee, even you're against me. Everybody's against me. I'm going to get undressed and go to bed.
I can get along without Mr. Benny, believe me. Last week I was on Frank Sinatra's program. When I stepped out on the stage, the girls screamed louder at me than they did at Sinatra. Then Frankie told me I forgot my pants. (laughs) Frankie said I should have my own program, and I'm going to have it, too. And another thing, from now on, I'm going to listen to Fred Allen with the door wide open. (laughs) No more of that sneaky stuff. I'll show Mr. Benny. Oh, boy, this bed feels good. I don't need Jack Benny. Anyway, where would he be without his violin? (laughs) I'm going to have my own program one of these days and... Be a big star. And girls are going to be crazy about me. My own program. That's what I'll have. I'll show Mr. Benny. My own program. Big star. Girls crazy about me. Big star. The Grape Nuts and Grape Nuts Flakes program, starring Dennis Day, with Winston Churchill, Henry Morgenthau, Queen Elizabeth, Samuel Goldwyn, and yours truly, Gypsy Rose Lee. I'm a big star now, my own program. I don't have to sing anymore. I've got the best in show business. (laughs) And now, folks, for our feature attraction tonight... I'll take it. Hello? Hello. I'd like to speak to Dennis Day, please. This is Miss Stanwyck. Miss Stanwyck? Gee. Uh, just a minute, please. It's for you, Dennis. It's Barbara Stanwyck. Oh, is that dame calling again? <laughs> she drives me nuts. Tell her I'm not in. But, Dennis... You heard me, fat boy. Tell her I'm not in. <laughs> okay. Uh, Miss Stanwyck, I- I'm sorry, but Mr. Day isn't in. I know he's there. I know it. I heard his voice. Tell him I've got to speak to him, please, please. Yes, ma'am. Dennis, she insists on talking to you. Oh, all right. I'll give her a thrill. (laughs) Hello? Dennis. Dennis, I must talk to you. It's urgent. Oh, hello, urgent. (laughs) No, no, it's Barbara. Oh. Well, what do you want, kid? Dennis. Dennis, I haven't heard from you in five days. What's the matter? What's happened between us? You've been neglecting me. You've changed, Dennis. You're not the same. I know it. I can feel it. Oh, if there's anything, if there's anything I should know, I wish you'd tell me. Well, if you must know, I don't love you anymore, kid. <laughs> oh, oh, how can you do this to me, Dennis? After 17 years. Oh, I must see you alone. Some place where we can talk. Meet me at the Brown Derby. The Brown Derby? Okay, goodbye. Goodbye, darling. Hmm. Oh, well, I might as well meet her and get this over with. Gee, it's crowded here at the Brown Derby. A table for Mr. Day. A table for Mr. Day. A table for Mr. Day. A day for Mr. Table. A day for Mr. Table. A day for Mr. Table. A derby for Mr. Brown. A derby for Mr. Brown. A derby for Mr. Day. It's Derby Day! (laughs) But, darling, darling, it's been five days. Five whole days since I've seen you. It was never like this before, never. Not so loud. People are listening. Let's order something to eat. Oh, waiter. Waiter. Yes, Mr. Day. (laughs) What will you have, sir? $186,000 on whole wheat toast. (laughs) Yes, sir. And what will you have, madame? The same thing. And hold the toast. (laughs) Yes, madame. But first, would you mind standing up for a minute? Why? We're taking out the benches and putting in folding chairs. (laughs) Uh, Thank you. Oh, Dennis. It's 
been such a wonderful evening. Just being near you again has given me something to live for. Well, I'm sorry, Barbara, but this is the end. I'm never going to see you again. Oh, no. No, Dennis, darling, don't say that. You mustn't say that. I love you. I love you. You mustn't leave me. You mustn't. (laughs) (laughs) Tell me more. You fascinate me. (laughs) Oh, you're cruel. You're heartless. You're selfish. You're urgent. Dennis, Dennis, you're making fun of me. You're toying with my emotions. You're tormenting me. If you leave me now, I'll kill myself. Do you hear? I'll kill myself. You wouldn't dare. Oh, yes, I would. You see this gun? Yeah. Well, tell me that you love me or I'll shoot myself right now. Well. Say you love me or I'll shoot myself. Well, I love you. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. She did it. She killed herself. But it wasn't my fault. I'm not to blame. I'm not to blame. Oh, yes, you are. I'm not. Who said that? (laughs) I did. (laughs) I saw you, Dennis Day. You killed her. No, I didn't, Mr. Benny. Really, I didn't. She killed herself. You drove her to it. And you'll sit and fry in the electric chair. (laughs) No, I won't. No, I won't. Barbara, Barbara, speak to me. (laughs) You killed her. She's dead. Barbara, speak to me. Speak to me. L.S. MFT. <laughs> you killed her. You killed her. You killed her. Get away from me. Get away from me. Mother. Oh, mother. Father. 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 What's the matter, son? What's the matter? What are you screaming about? Oh, well, father. I just had the most horrible nightmare. Oh, is that all? For a minute, I thought your mother'd come home. (laughs) All right, now go back to sleep. Okay. Good night, Pop. Good night. Well, folks, we'll be with you next Sunday night at the same time. And I want to thank Warner Brothers for allowing Dennis Day to dream about Barbara Stanwyck. (laughs) Good night, folks. The Grape Nuts and Grape Nuts Flakes program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Now, ladies and gentlemen... Springtime in Southern California. Flowers are blooming, the sun is sending down its glorious rays, while the birds are singing in the trees. So like the birds, let us fly to Jack Benny's home in Beverly Hills. At the moment, Rochester is dusting the living room. Besame, besame mucho. Each time I cling to your lips, I am music divine. My, my, clean this room and I clean this room. And before you know it, it's dusty again. Seems like I'm in here every month. <laughs> Oh, well, besame, besame mucho, como si fuera esta noche la otra vez. Rochester, Rochester, what are you doing in there? Just a little spring cleaning, boss. Oh, well, don't dust the table. I've got a couple of phone numbers written on it. (laughs) Phone numbers? Yes, uh, one in particular, Gloria Bagelquist. Very good friend of mine. Uh oh, I just wiped out a beautiful friendship. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake, why did you have to clean the table anyway? But, boss, I didn't know it was a table till I got through dusting it. <laughs> now that's silly. Didn't you see those Duncan Fife legs? Uh huh. Well, what'd you think it was? Gloria Bagel Quiz! <laughs> Oh, stop being funny and go on with your cleaning. I'll be in the library. Okay. Well, look what's on top of the piano. Mr. Benny's violin. Maybe I ought to dust that, too. And look what's up here on the mantel. Nail clippers. All I have to do is clip the strings on this violin, 
and I will replace the dog as man's best friend. <laughs> now, now, Clippers, don't get nervous. All you got to do is bite those strings, like this. There. Now I'd better hide the fiddle in this closet before Mr. Benny. Oh, um... Oh, Rochester! Yes, boy! <laughs> what was that sound I just heard? It wasn't Decime Moon! <laughs> <laughs> Rochester, there's something funny going on here. I want to know just what it was. Now, what was that sound I heard? Sound? That plink, 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 plink. Plink, 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 plink. Yes. Well, let me think, 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 think. <laughs> think, 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 think. About the plink, 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 plink. Now cut that out. <laughs> okay, let's both forget it. Rochester, I don't know what's come over you lately. You're getting so silly, sometimes I... Come in! Hello, Jack. Oh, hello, Mary. It was such a beautiful day, I went for a walk and thought I'd drop in. Well, I'm glad you did. I called up the whole gang this morning to come over for a swim in my pool, but you weren't home. A swimming party? Gee, that'll be fun. Yeah. But, Jack, if you're inviting people to your house, you ought to get rid of that camel. The odor is something awful. What are you talking about? My camel's out in the backyard, and we're in the house with the doors closed. I know, but that smell is strong enough to turn the doorknob. <laughs> well, Mary, if you were living here, you'd get used to it. Jack, if that's a proposal, that camel isn't helping any. <laughs> I'm not proposing. Anyway, Mary, I can't get rid of the camel because I hired an Arab to take care of it. A real Egyptian Arab. A real Arab from Egypt? Yeah. Well, gee, doesn't he miss the desert? Yes, but I take him to Azusa twice a week. <laughs> Mondays and Thursdays. Say, Mary, if you stay for my swimming party, you'll get to see him later. Okay. Here, give me your jacket and I'll hang it up in this closet. Thanks. You know when the... Well, I'll be... Look, my violin and the strings have been caught. Rochester! Rochester! You call me, boss? Now, Rochester, why did you cut the strings on my violin? I just wanted to prove something. Prove what? That life can be beautiful. <laughs> I can't understand you, Rochester. I don't know why you keep doing things to make me unhappy. You know what I'm going to do with you? Oh, boss, are we going on Mr. Anthony's program again? <laughs> You ought to be ashamed of yourself, cu yourself cutting the strings on my violin. Don't you like music? <laughs> Mary, stop laughing. You'll only encourage him to do it again. I know. Well, come on. The gang, the gang ought to be here any minute now. Let's go out in the kitchen and prepare a little snack. Okay. Oh, Jack, I think I'll phone my house and tell Butterfly to bring my bathing suit over. Sure. Go right ahead. Oh, gee, I've only got four pennies. That's all right. You can owe me a penny. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Okay. Here. Thanks. Uh, while you're phoning, Mary, I'll make some toast for the sandwiches. Okay. Uh, Jack, the line was busy. Oh, here. <laughs> Jack! Oh. Uh, I'm sorry, I... I had a little mayonnaise on my finger. <laughs> now, come on, Mary, help me with the sandwiches, will you? Da da dum, de da da dum, sweet Georgia Brown. De da da dum, de da da dum, de da da dum. Gee, I hope the gang gets here pretty soon. Gee, it'd be fun getting in that pool now that the nice weather is here. It sure will. Say, Jack, when did you have the pool filled? Oh, about three weeks ago. Who did it? Are you kidding? <laughs> It did rain a little, you know. <laughs> Say, if I expect to get my bathing suit, I better call Butterfly again. You don't have to, Mary. My girlfriend, uh, Gladys Abisko, left her suit here. You can wear that. Jack, her suit would be much too big for me. Now, wait a minute, Mary. Gladys isn't so fat. She just brought across the hips. 
I know, but her hips run clear up to her shoulders. Oh, Mary, stop being catty. Well, I'm going to phone Butterfly and get my own suit. Okay. Thanks. Hello? Hello, Butterfly. This is Miss Livingston. I've been trying to get you, but the line's been busy. Oh, yes. My boyfriend Jerome called, and he wanted to take me to a movie. May I have the night off? Why, certainly, Butterfly. Anytime Jerome comes in from camp, it's perfectly all right. Thank you. He's taking me to see Madame Curie. Madame Curie? Butterfly, I thought you saw that picture last night. I did, but I didn't understand it. (laughs) Well, do you think you'll understand it tonight? Who cares? I'll be with Jerome. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I see. (laughs) Don't tell Jerome. I won't. Mary. Mary, hurry up. Tell her to bring your bathing suit. Okay. Well, look, Butterfly, the reason I call is that I want you to bring my bathing suit over to Mr. Benny's house. Oh, hasn't he got one of his own? (laughs) No, no, Butterfly, I'm going to wear it. It's in the bottom dresser drawer on the right-hand side. Yes, ma'am. But, Miss Livingston, I don't know how to get to Mr. Benny's house. Oh, well, look, first you go to the corner of Lexington. Just a minute, Miss Livingston, I'll get the fountain pen and write it down. All right. I'm ready. Good. Now, first you go to the corner of Lexington. Just a minute, Miss Livingston. I'll get some paper to write it on. <laughs> I'm ready. Uh, first you go to the corner of Lexington and Camden. Just a minute, Miss Livingston. I'm stuck. You're stuck? Yes. I sat down on the fountain pen. <laughs> I'm in a hurry. Go to the corner of Lexington and Camden, catch the bus there, and get off at Mr. Benny's house. The bus goes right past it. Yes, ma'am. But how will I know which is Mr. Benny's house? Well, you see a big sign out in front that says, If I can't act better than Paul Lucas, I'll eat my hat. (laughs) It's a big sign. But, Miss Livingston, I broke my glasses and I can't read. Well, that's all right. You'll see Mr. Benny out there eating his hat. (laughs) (laughs) Goodbye, Butterfly. Goodbye. Mary, that wasn't a bit funny. Well, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Imagine putting a sign on the lawn that you're a better actor than Paul Lucas. Mary, Rochester wrote that sign out there. Well, why don't you make him take it down? Freedom of the press, that's (laughs) why. Anyway, Mary, the reason I... Boss! 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 Rochester, what's happened? What's the matter? Boss, you just have to get rid of that camel. Get rid of my camel? Why? What'd she do? Nothing, but if you get rid of your camel, you'll get rid of that Arab. He wants to kill me. (laughs) The Arab? What did you do to him? Nothing. Boss, I was just... Never mind. Here he comes. I'll ask him. Mustafa. Mustafa. It's a kind of ragged Dima Sibnish. I'm on my way to the Lao Bar Rochester while I'm in Rome in Bedcombe. Laos. (laughs) (laughs) Mustafa. What, What did Rochester do to you? ساكن معاكم قومتين ثلاثة والراجل دي أخذ كل فلوسي تلاو برا روتشستر did did you do that your guess is as good as mine well well I'm going to get to the bottom of this مصطفى now, calm down and tell me, what did Rochester do to you? He's a kind of ragged damn Sibnish, and I'm in a widow. Come, seven. Baby needs new shoes. <laughs> Rochester, come back here. Rochester, when that Arab came here, I warned you not to get him into a dice game. But, boss, it wasn't my fault. I was teaching him English, and we drifted into cubic arithmetic. <laughs> Don't let it happen again. And give him back his turban. It looks silly on you. <laughs> now, Moosey, 
Uh, Moosey, go take care of my camel like you're supposed to. The law matter! Well, I'm ruining back on Mustafa, control yourself! Rochester, back down! If I die, I'm a good of Lucy, so let's go hard! What a house! This is crazier than a radio program. <laughs> Say, Jack, I won't wait for Butterfly to bring my bathing suit. I'll go in the other room and put on Gladys's. Okay. Come in! Well! Hiya, Jackson. Hello, Mr. Benny. Hello, Jack. Hiya, fellas. Say, how come the three of you all got here at the same time? Oh, we got a carpool. A carpool? Yeah. Yes, sir, we sure have. Well. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's nice. Say... Who are you? Herman Peabody. <laughs> Herman, Herman Peabody? Oh, it's all right, Jack. He belongs to our Share the Ride Club. Oh, say, I go downtown a lot. Maybe I could get in your carpool, too. No, I'm sorry, Jackson. We haven't got enough room. Oh, too many people already, huh? Not only that, but two of them never get out. <laughs> never get out? Yeah, some sailor and his girl. <laughs> that girl with the sailor is mine. <laughs> Why? Well, come on, fellas. Let's all go swimming. Me too. Okay, you, you too, Herman. I really shouldn't stay. I ought to be working. I'm an insurance salesman. But it's so beautiful out, Herman. Why don't you take the day off? Well, okay. Now let's get into our bathing suits. Oh, and... I just thought of something. What, Herman? Maybe I shouldn't take the day off. Maybe if I work today, I'd sell somebody an insurance policy. Well, you can sell it to him tomorrow. Yeah, I guess you're right. Well, fellas, but let's go... something might happen to him today. <laughs> Who? That man that won't be here tomorrow to buy the policy I should have sold him today. May he rest in peace. <laughs> what are you talking about? Think of his poor wife and children. Oh, now, Herman, you're letting your imagination run away with you. you... I guess you're right. Come on, let's have fun. <laughs> yeah, boy. Let's Come on, everybody. Let's get into our bathing suit. Yeah, let's. Yeah. Dennis, you're supposed to take your clothes off first. <laughs> you ought to know that. Oh. Hey, Mr. Benny, I don't think I ought to stay. <laughs> Why not? That poor widow and her two children, I... Can't get them out of my mind. Well, look, if it bothers you that much, Herman, why don't you go? Okay, I will. All right. Say, Jackson, how do I look in my bathing suit? Phil, only girls are supposed to wear bare midriffs. <laughs> but as long as you've got it on, wear it. Mr. Benny, I decided to stay. Good, good. <laughs> oh, man! We'll wait for you, but hurry up. We want to get in as much swimming as we can before we go to rehearsal. Oh, by the way, Dennis, what are you going to sing today? On the program? Yeah. Well, I don't know the name of it, but it goes like this. Say, Dennis, that song will be swell for the program, and the name of it is I'll Get By. Oh, thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. Hey, Mary, we're waiting. Aren't you ready yet? Here I come. Hello, fellas. How do I look? Oh, fine, Mary. Well, Mary, say, Jackson, before I go in, I'm going to use your telephone. Okay, go ahead. Well, that's a fine way to treat me. You let Phil use the phone for nothing. Never mind. Uh, say, Mary, uh, you thought uh, Gladys Abisco's bathing suit would be too big for you, didn't you? Well? Why, it's snug. Look how you had to pull it up to pin it up over your shoulders. Well, Jack, I've got a surprise for you. What? I'm only wearing the pants. <laughs> I'm wearing a shirt. <laughs> well, it's, um... <laughs> well, it, it looks, uh... It looks real, uh... It looks real nice on you, Herman. I'm in here, too. <laughs> Dennis, you've got your own suit. Say, John, 
Don, you must have been... Yeah, we can go in now. Here comes Mr. Harris. Good. Say, Phil, did you make your phone call? Yeah. Here, Jackson, you can punch my ticket. Okay. <laughs> okay, kid. There. Well, of all the chief... Now I've seen everything. No, you haven't. Wait, you ask for a towel. <laughs> Rochester, go back to the kitchen and take that turban off. <laughs> if you know what I mean, Rochester. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on. Well, come on, kids. Let's all run out and jump in the pool. Okay. Gosh, I hope the water isn't too cold. Oh, don't be a sissy, Phil. Come on, everybody. Last one in is a rotten egg. <laughs> Hey, look at me. I'm a whale. Gosh, this is swell. Hey, look at Jack. Where? Oh, Jackson, come on in. (laughs) Well, is it cold? No, no, the water's warm. Well. If you don't believe it, stick your foot in and see. Okay. Say, it is warm. Mr. Benny, take your foot out of my mouth. (laughs) Oh, 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 oh. Hey, Jackson, the best way is to get up on the diving board and then jump right in. Well, okay, get out of the way, everybody. Team away from around the diving board. Here I come. <laughs> well, I'll be darned he landed right back on the diving board. Ooh. Hey, Jackson's hurt. Mr. Benny, aren't you coming in? <laughs> Ooh. Mr. Benny? Herman, can't you see he's unconscious? Oh, when he comes to, will you tell him I decided to go? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Now, come on, boys. Let's pick Jack up and carry him to a more comfortable spot. Okay. I've got his feet. I've got his head. Hey, look at me. I'm Monty Woolley. I'm Monty Woolley. Dennis, take that off your chin and put it back on Mr. Benny's head. Here, give it to me. I'll hold it. Look at poor Jack. Yeah. I wonder what to do now. I know. Oh, Rochester. Yeah, Mr. Harris. Rochester, there's been an accident. Bring some whiskey and some spirits of ammonia. Yes, sir. Gee, I better cover Jack up with this robe. There. Look at him lying there with such a blank expression. Yeah, let's turn him over so he's facing us. <laughs> oh, good. Here comes Rochester with the whiskey and the spirits of ammonia. Here you are, Mr. Harris. Okay. <clears throat> now give Mr. Benny the spirits of ammonia. <laughs> give it to him. Here, Jack. Here. Ooh. It's no use, fellas. He's still groggy. I know how to revive him. Let's pick him up and throw him in the pool. Yeah, that'll do it. All right, fellas, lift him up. Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> I went to all this trouble to keep out of the pool. I'm going to stay out. What? It wasn't easy to land back on that diving board. I had to practice. Oh, so that's it. Come on, fellas, in with him. Put me down. Put me down. One, two, no! Darn you, fellas! You'll never come to mind! Say, the water is warm. Gee, it's nice. Hey, come on in, gang. Come on in, you great big sissies. You're so hungry. Uh, we're a little late. Good night, folks. <clears throat>